everybody, and welcome to a special episode of the Dogcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Dogcast is great. We always talk about video game news and our console critters roundup. But today, it's all just balled into one announcement mania super fest. Too much went on, and there's no way to deny it. We have to. Like, it's impossible, yeah. If we put it off, it won't be relevant when we get to it. So, my name is Brad. And I'm here, my name is Dylan, and I'm ready to talk some games because my brain is chock full of this. Almost as much as McDonald's lore at this point. I haven't had the Grimace shake yet. But I have. <laughs> I have I have driven by McDonald's and looked at it longingly. <laughs> um, we are part of the Tokyo Beat Podcast Network. Make sure to check out all the other amazing shows. And we are, of course, a podcast about video games and beer and Starfield and... Uh, I'm going to make you talk about FF7 Rebirth a little bit today. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, uh, We'll go through these in a chronological-ish order. We're definitely not going to talk about... You actually about, got them kind of in order. Then, they're, huh? they're in order. The ones that are in bold are the ones that I thought I want to talk about, mm-hmm. but they're also the other ones are there if you want to. Um, sure. talk about them mm-hmm. and some of them are in multiple fests but uh ladies and gentlemen there's a lot here this is astounding and i've and i've watched most of these so uh brad you might have to back me up on a few yep that's that's why i spent three hours say like holy shit there's a lot of games coming out we uh, even on the discord everyone's talking about how this might be one of the great years in video games i believe ryan was one who was like posing the question yeah and at Tyler brought it up yesterday after Tyler or after Ryan mentioned that, and I said, "I think it's early, but I think it's right. I think it's it's cinched for me. I think because unless Starfield is a major wet fart or something, <sighs> it doesn't look like a wet fart. No, it looks like a big. Um, I don't think they wanted to fuck up after Fallout seventy six, and after their track record of poor releasing everything. I'm hoping this thing isn't a buggy. Uh, bastard yeah but <laughs> maybe the fact that it's on one console that might help it quite yeah. a bit it's not having to be on xbox yeah. one and switch oh my god can you imagine that game trying to run on a switch essentially it would be my the- phone is more powerful than a switch now <laughs> so Dang. yeah it, it'd be like the cutesy <laughs> version of ff15 oh That's gross switch. the chibi <laughs> uh at the top though um June 8th, there was Summer Game Fest, and I just didn't realize that Jeff Keighley needs to get on stage and talk about video games so often. Yeah, he does. I, I've started it up, and I was like, oh, it's an on stage in front of an audience type deal. I I think that's cool, though. I think there is, E3 didn't happen this year. Yeah. And I, I kind of say good riddance, oh. because I think the showings that we've had now are some of the best I've seen. You're, you're not weeding through things to find things anymore. It's giving you basically what the overview is, and then you just got all, you're allowed to be surprised. It's nice having controlled uh, releases. The I mean, the highlights for me are always Nintendo Directs. Yeah, uh, they just seem so perfectly coordinated and thought out. There's not like a they've got someone special on that. They're perfectly dorky. Oh, man. You know what? Only, and the only way like a Japanese company can get away with because if Americans tried to be awkward like that, it it wouldn't work for me. Yeah. A bunch of suits standing up and like, did you see him wiggle a little? If Phil, if Phil Spencer tried to get up there <laughs> and do the wiggle dance, it wouldn't work. And then it's the like, guys like, what are you doing? It's like the win- the release of Windows 98 and they're all all the uh, developers are dancing up on screen. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> The whitest dudes you know. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, ah, 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 ah. I'm just like, man, you're kids. <laughs> I bet they're happy with how much money you make, but I'm not sure they're like going to say my dad's the coolest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dad's the richest. <laughs> that uh, actually means more these days. Yeah. The first thing I wanted to mention in Summer Game Fest, Mortal Kombat 1. Interesting. Got yeah. a trailer. It's it's Mortal Kombat again. Mm-hmm. The gameplay that they did show, it looks extremely similar. I didn't. I mean, I'm not super well versed, but it looks like you like it. Here's more of the same. Yeah. Plus an added nostalgic factor of original costumes and settings from MK1. I think that's an excellent idea. I kind of like this multiverse thing, even though I'm kind of multiversed out. Everything. Story. Oh my we god. A, we should have a dog cast multiverse. Well, it's so crazy. Where you're you're like always sober and I'm super stoned. And then we- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just like I'm wearing glasses now. 
I have all my hair back. <laughs> you have a man bun. <laughs> yeah. And I'm wearing a full suit and I don't sweat. The problem with video games today. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I liked this a lot. I do believe they may actually be going way, I mean, more violent if they can. Because from what I even saw, it does seem like they're really leaning into the hyper violence of it all. It's always been that way, though. It right? has, but like I feel like they got to keep ratcheting that notch up every single time. More clever fatalities. If they actually show someone ripping off Goro's dick and shoving it in his mouth, then I'm like, okay, you're pushing the envelope. Now we now. don't know if he has a penis. He might have a cloaca. We don't know much about that species. You're right. There is other, a, other there than is a the, bulge. We do know that they have forearm t shirts, though, and that's fun. Oh, yeah. So expensive. But only need two-armed tank tops, probably. (laughs) It's a good point. It's a very good point. (laughs) I'm just thinking about it. Uh, I'm wearing an A shirt, like a wife beater. (laughs) Deep cut. (laughs) He's got a mullet now. (laughs) He's at the gym with those, like, dorky sunglasses. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Something that did make me upset was the very end of the trailer where it says, pre-order now to get Shang Tsung. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm pre-order bonuses still always make me upset and they push me away before I even get there. I mean, you're not really a day one person anyway. Almost never if I can avoid it. Well, the, especially these Mortal Kombat's, they tend to go on sale half price in about five months after they will, like that. It'll be down to 20 bucks, but then, or it'll be free, but you have the option to spend 30 bucks on their yeah. game pass or whatever. Yeah. I, I've gotten all the Destiny games free a couple times, but it's only when they have the new expansion they want someone to buy it. So they so badly want people to buy it. Side note, when you, when I back a game on Kickstarter and I spend money on it, and then it gets announced as it's coming to Game Pass Day 1, I'm like, that's a kick in my dick. Is that what happened? Uh, it's sea the of, one. Sea of Stars yeah. is, yeah, I'm like super pumped for the game still, but I'm like, it's just, it seems like it's hurtful to me. Well, I also think that, I don't know. Your show of support meant something to investors. There will be a statue in the game that says Hair of the Dog Cast. So that's cool. I mean, I like that. Although it'll be in a room of probably 100 statues and no one will read them because it's just too many statues. <sighs> yeah. But I can go there and be like, look at my money. I know. It's not It's not like back in the day where there's like a room in Earth or er, in uh, Pokemon, I think, with one of the developer's names. He made like a special room for himself. That's cute. Yeah. Um, the next thing that jumped out at me, if there's anything in here that you see along the way, well, we're, we're going to skip path of exile too. That's mobile, right? I don't, I didn't even write anything down. That's it, a, it must mo- have mo- a MoMA. Yeah. There's, there's the number of like just mobile and PC games on some of this. Uh, Sometimes I feel, I really have started to feel like captain grandpa. Like there's, there are games coming out. Honkai star rail. What? Uh huh. I, and then I hear about like these little games that are doing like buku numbers, and I've never even heard of them. They're so outside of my radar, outside Huge of my little MMO bubble. in China coming to America. Yeah. This one has John Claude Van Damme as DLC <laughs> or something. It's like <laughs> something ridiculous. When something is already big overseas and it's like getting the American release or a mobile only beta access coming, I'm like, my eyes turn off a little bit. Um, yeah, I. Did, I didn't mention Path of Exile too. Street Fighter Six is getting a crossover with Exo Primal, which just means Ryu and Guile, or Ryu and Guile, are going to be in the game for oh, a while. Yeah, mm. Which Fire look cool, but it's PC only, so that yeah, that kind of takes us out of the running, right? Uh, but Sonic Superstars, Sonic Superstars. What do you think? I like it. I think it looks cool. I like lo- the most exciting thing to me in the game. Like I get it, two D Sonic. We've been there. That's fine. Four player, local Mm co-op, whatever. Cool. I get it. That's cool. Yeah. The thing that got me excited, though, was the characters like transitioned into pixelated squid and it had a different move set and like a different style of level for a second. Mm -hmm. When they transformed, I'm like, new gameplay mechanics could be cool. I, you know, the last good one was what? Sonic Mania? Yeah. Sonic Mania was really good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, uh, that developer, Christian Whitehead and, uh, What's his studio's name? That did Sonic Mania? Yeah. They got a new game coming out. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Yo-Yo, yo, Penny, and the... Penny something adventure. I mean, I think it looks fun. I'm down for... I really just like platformers. Are we talking about superstars? Uh, the other one. The Penny's Yo-Yo thing. I don't know. 
it, it just seemed weird to me. But uh, Sonic Superstars, uh, four-player co-op, I do not know how that's going to function properly. I, I mean, I said local, but maybe it's only online. Because uh, local co-op for those kind of things just seem like a headache. But unless you can't leave the actual, like, screen. You, you can't. Can, probably <clears throat> it's like Tails in uh, 2. I liked, uh, I mean, so it's Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, and Amy Rose. Mm-hmm. And Amy's got a hammer and she can break through walls is like her thing. It's also her traditional look from Sega CD or from the uh, Sonic CD. Yeah, they have like mm-hmm. a more cutesy uh, old school look rather than like edgy new look, which I always prefer. I prefer the cute <clears throat> Sonic. Yeah. A million degrees. The other one apparently has too much sex appeal and that's caused a huge problem on the Internet. <laughs> yeah. Huge problem in my marriage. <laughs> 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 I'll, it'll be listed in the divorce proceedings. Yeah. <laughs> Bradley requests his Sonic action figures back from Carly's bedroom. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's coming out for everything late 2023. Makes I, sense. I'll buy it. It really, if this is a $60 game, I won't touch it for a while. No. But um, 25, if, maybe. I would go as high as 25. Yeah. I might even go 30 if the reviews are good. Mm hmm. It, it really just depends uh, if this is like an, a, bl- a real blowout, like a crazy, like return to form. I'm into it. Yeah, I'll get it I, because <clears throat> why not? I why? played Frontiers and it surprised the living shit out of me. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that. So <clears throat> I don't know. But you say, why not? For me, why not? I haven't played Frontiers, Resident Evil 4. I haven't played Star Wars, Jedi, Fallen Order or Survivor. There's, mm-hmm. why not? I am trying to catch up. Yeah. And then when Starfield comes out, it's going to be like, fuck your three months. Yeah, I have to get that day one. Yeah. I mean, you can have it day one. It's called Game Pass. I will have it day one, so that's great. Yeah. yeah. We'll, I might buy it physical. We'll try and call out day one Game Passes as we go along, because okay. I have them listed anyways. Um, Lies of P being one of them. Yeah. That got a cinematic trailer at Summer Game Fest. I did not watch this one. <clears throat> Do you try the demo? Mm -mm. it's bloodborne but not as good but it looks pretty and it scratches an itch really i mean i've heard a lot about it and people talk about it and i don't know man i don't need a pretender to the throne nope i don't but if i have an itch that can be scratched it can it's good to scratch it sometimes i don't have a lot of faith the one thing i know is from soft I can trust everything they put out. Yeah. And when you have imitators, obvious imitators. Blatant. It is yeah. blatant how much yeah. everything is like, oh, this is your blood vi- the blood echoes. This is mm-hmm. like your your fly. Uh, your what flasks. do they call them in this one? I heard a few things about it. I I don't know. Yeah. It. Uh, yeah. Ugh. I, I don't it, know, man. And I'm the blue fairy. You need to wake up and go find Geppetto. And I'm like, okay, oh, this is, then this, I'm like, oh, this is the the bonfire, I get it, Mm -hmm. but I don't know, Uh, that's coming day one Game Pass, September 19th for both Playstations, both Xboxes, and Windows. Uh, Then there was a a game called Sandland announced, Yeah. and then I went to to Google and I put in Sandland and it pulled up a manga from like 1990 or 2000 or something, I was like, oh, so it's old, it's an older, it's a a franchise. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you watch the Sandland trailer at all? I've seen only screenshots of Sandland. What did you think? Uh, it's a new anime RPG from Bandai Namco. It looked good until it felt like Dragon Ball Kakarot from a when I squinted my eyes. Oh. Um, well, it's a little more cartoony than that. The, the, the gameplay, the world, the way it moved mm-hmm. was my I mean, thing. That's, that's Toriyama. That's yeah. just how, that's what you're going to get. I mean, look at like Chrono Trigger. All that kind of looks like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, it, it's not just the look, though. It was the feel of the game, the way the vehicles and the combat moved. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's coming. To- so is this like <clears throat> a metal, um, twisted metal-like? It's uh, world exploration. It's vehicles and com- there's vehicles and combat, but there's also regular fighting. Oh, that's cool. And uh, it looked fine. If there wasn't so many other games that would be more intriguing everything's going to get swallowed up 
yeah, that's there's a lot. Um, there's that's coming to everything but the Switch. No release date there. Everything but the Switch. That's going to be something we're going to be seeing probably for a long time now. Because according to the Direct, they're not done with the Switch. They're not even winding down. I guess it makes sense at if they are there, they are definitely working on their next console. Oh yeah. And if they just need to take longer to make sure it is the perfect thing that'll last for another eight, nine years. I understand. They're, they're gonna have to. <clears throat> I mean, anything, please, anything 4K. Come on. <laughs> and I th- well, and I think the next thing they release, they will never fuck up again not having a giant first party game release day one. Mm-hmm. Like that is the most important thing for them. I guarantee you one of the release titles is going to be Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom remastered. And that's a that that's enough to get people to buy it. I know. Yep. It's With, plus DLC, plus character skins or maybe even like a Zelda collection. Yep, uh plus uh the 264 Zeldas in there as well or I something. I think they I think they now you know how Mario used to be like the opener, like the the one who kind of like you know, like Kicks the door open. yeah, basically, yeah. Now I think that Zelda, that it's so ubiquitous now. I I've talked to so many people who've played this game, and I used to have trouble finding people playing the Legend of Zelda games. Yeah, so it it did make it popular for everyone again, where it definitely wasn't the case back. No, then. no, no. I mean, Skyward Sword was just people liked it, but it was a wet fart yeah. kind of. Uh, <clears throat> I think they learned a lot from it though, and. There's so much DNA of Skyward Sword in Breath of the Wild. So, I don't know. It's got to be something, and it's not going to be the sequel. Yeah. They're not going to have time for that. It, that's about another five years away. If we're going on, like, the general scale of what Zelda has been doing. But I don't think they can go back to Hyrule again as a location. Do a, uh, I, I don't know what to do next. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I would say let's go somewhere else. Or if they, I mean, Metroid something or other is still in their back pocket. Maybe they announced, the, maybe they knew they announced the new Metroid as the day one game for that. And if it's as good as it should be, that would be a system seller too. Uh, I mean, Prime Remastered is, I forgot how much I loved that video game. It's kind of a masterpiece. Yeah, I would be curious to go back and play it with that weird control scheme on the GameCube because now it's different, right? Now you can actually do twin stick. Which is what I want. <laughs> Well, I had it on the Wii, yeah, and it had full motion control capability. On the Wii, it worked really well, actually, and that's the preferred method method of play. Yeah. You could you could put in um, you could use a Nintendo controller, and it would have twin stick, I believe. <clears throat> but this just makes so much more sense. But it just re- decalibrates with the Joy-Con, and it's just too tiny. Like at least mm. it was a big remote with the Wii. This one. I would just do standard FPS. Didn't hear anything about Metroid Prime 4, though, at the Direct. Nope. It's kind of unfortunate uh, Uh, because that's the one thing I'm looking forward to most. Yeah. Aside uh, from stuff I already know about, but, you know. uh, We got Alan Wake 2. Got a trailer. Two playable characters. You can switch freely between them. Third-person survival horror investigate ritualistic murders. I didn't play the first Alan Wake. It's worth doing. I've heard very good things. Uh, it is a little, uh, it is extremely early 2010s video game. The yeah. game. Yeah. Was that like what, 360 then? Yeah, that was the 360. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be maybe not easy to go back to. Uh, the remastered version fixes a few things. It looks a <clears> lot <throat> nicer. Uh, I was still impressed, but I don't know. I'm excited for this one. I'm going to play it. Obviously, Tyler is a huge fan of this series. Yeah. Um, I found it to going back to it to be extremely corny and just kind of emblematic about how far we've come with writing and mocap and visual storytelling in general in video games. Mm -hmm. Like we're now hiring like cinematic directors for these things. So I like the fact that this character's returning, but he's kind of a wet blanket. Nobody. The, the, I mean, the worst part of the series that I know of is the name. Alan Wake is not a good name to me. It's his name. What about a game? That doesn't mean it's a good title. So if you start in a video game, it wouldn't be just be called Bradley Ward. Bradley Ward's a terrible name for a game. 
Luke Skywalker could be a great name for a movie because it's got Skywalker. Yeah, um, that's kind of dope. Alan Wake. If it was even just something like Alan Ironwood or something with a little bit more. Uh, is it supposed flavor? to be a pun for something? Am I losing something here? Is it supposed to be like, uh, like, because it takes place on like a coastal town, like Wake and, or like Wake Up from a Dream? Uh, I don't when, understand when what the sea Alan pulls means. out, things are revealed or something. I don't know. Alan, though. The Alan wake, is the such wake, like a. The Wake that follows behind you as you're blazing a trail. I don't. If it was called, if it was called like even like John Wake. Like John, John Wick. John Wake. John Wake actually sounds good, but only because I know John Wick. Alan's not a strong name. Alan is definitely not a strong person's name. And no offense if your name is Alan. We love you, but we get it. Oh, it's great. Listen, there I'm, just hasn't been a lot of Alans. In I'm this. a Dylan. I'm the name that like shitty parents yell at the grocery store. Like, Dylan, get back here. Yep. No, Dylan. We have gummy bears at home. See, Brad isn't a strong name, but it is adjacent to Chad. Yeah. So it has bad connotations too. Mm. Uh, yeah. Alan Wake 2, PS5, Xbox, and Windows, October 17th. Uh, the next thing that jumped out at me was John Carpenter's Toxic Commando, only because it's been a while since I saw a game that had to put a filmmaker in front of it. Yeah. And I was like, I thought we were done with that. John Woo's Stranglehold, like, did anyone? I wonder how much he's involved because John Carpenter is a huge video game fan. Oh, is he? Oh, he, he, he says, I, if I could just like do video games, I would do it. I would just quit making movies. Cool. He's actually said that. And all he does is apparently play new video games and then harass people online who develop the video games. <laughs> Not like harass them, but ask them a shitload of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he's just super into it. He's just an old man who really wants to do his own fucking thing. Just likes video games. And I mean, God bless you. I mean, the dude made the thing. You're allowed to do anything you oh, want yeah. forever. John oh, Carpenter. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, Ghosts of Mars was a bit of a misstep, but, uh, you made the thing you you get like free pass for me. Like you can make bullshit. <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola. I don't think he's made a good move in a movie in a long time. No, but it's not. It's like you made apocalypse now in the Godfathers. You can make Jack now. You can yep. make all the Jack. You can make sequels to Jack starring Zelda Williams. And oh my God. But don't, don't Jack make had a child. Don't make a thing about an adult and a child's or a child in an adult's body hanging out with Bill Cosby in a treehouse trying to bang Fran Drescher. Oof, yeah. I can understand parts of that, what I just said. That movie really got to me as a kid. I think it was like an existential crisis thing. I'm like, oh my God, we're all really going to fucking die. I'm 12 and I'm going to die someday. Yeah. So was he. And it was just like, and then he's an old man at his graduation. <laughs> I was what, like, what? <laughs> what What do I want to be when I grow up? Alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So inspiring, dude. Uh, yeah, Toxic Commando. It's a multiplayer shooter. The only thing that really caught my eyes that looks extremely fast paced and tons of enemies on screen. I yeah. if it's if it's something that is Game Pass, I, I don't have it marked, but uh, I won't get this uh, unless like I'll say this: I trust reviews from certain sites. I trust Metacritic to a certain degree because if there's like a really low score. I'm going to go read that review and I want them to tell me bit by bit if this is just like a bias that they have towards certain things in video games or if it's just a fundamental flaw that maybe I might be pissed off about too. Yeah. So I usually, it's like reading the one star review of like the five star place. Yeah. Uh, it's for me, it's hearing from people I trust. I trust your opinions and you play most games. So that's, Someone that I'm like, I don't know. 90% I don't of the time. If, I don't even know if I can keep up anymore. I've spent so much money on video games this year. Yeah. I was saying it on the chat. I was like, I got to stop. I got to stop this. Like, <laughs> my next big game is Pikmin 4, and that's less than a month away. Oh, it's, yeah, it is close. It's less than a month away. There's a lot of things coming very soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the other day I mentioned, like, hey, we're going outside to drink at this outdoor music thing. You want to go? And you're like, I'm playing Diablo with my wife, you nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I. it was also a weekday. Like, I don't generally go out during the week just because it's like, I have to go to bed at like 7.30 or 8. That is early. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just the way it works. Yep. Toxic Commando 2024. Uh, they didn't show anything from Spider-Man 2, but they had one of the game creators be interviewed on stage. He revealed Venom is not Eddie Brock. Okay. Ground shattering. Uh, the map size 
was something mentioned, and that's cool. It's doubled. It's Queens and Manhattan now. That rules. Uh, October 20th, 2023. Uh, very excited to play this Another game. Another fucking ball-busting game. That's a huge game. It's going to be Game of the Year contender for sure. Not it's for gonna, necessarily me, but for like is, the awards. No, I know. I'm I'm thinking that we might have to actually set up like a really knock knock down drag out fight, and then maybe include like some guests' opinions and really just hammer it down. I could also do polls on Instagram, kind of like the yeah. character battle, and just get people's thoughts, and we can just have games of the year, just like fight it out to what the the people vote for compared we could to what have, we vote for. We could have because I think we're I think we're technically. I don't know if we're going to be split we can as even, hard as we think this year, but I do think that we've come to the table, especially with Tyler's like first full year yeah. on Hair of the Dog cast. We, he's come to the table with obviously just something he was looking forward to this whole time. Me too. I came up with Bayonetta 3. Do I defend it? Yes. Do I think I was mildly wrong? Yes. Mm. I still love it, Yeah. but it, it's like my choice. I would love to see kind of a community kind of democratic we can have special awards like hottest new protagonist yeah that'd be fun hottest new male protagonist hottest new female protagonist we'll have like our own dog cast categories i like that yeah uh yeah spider-man 2 is october 20th uh pal world have you heard about pal world no it's pokemon with guns uh blatant ripoff of many pokemon designs you actually throw things that look like pokeballs to catch them you equip them with guns there was pictures or like a video of what looked like uh, like Pichu's and a guns factory making weapons. You might like it. Uh, I bet. It looked interesting. Um, Let me get a uh, RV gamer on the Discord said they should call it Pukemon, uh, like Pew, not Puke, but Pukemon is pretty good. Yeah, uh, it's um, it's coming to early access January twenty twenty four. It's Xbox and PC exclusive. But yeah, the, the 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 whole shtick is guns, Pokemon, and like boss battles. It uh, it yeah, it's kind of my shit. <laughs> um, it it looks astonishing. What is up with that, dude? And the gunplay looks pretty cool too. They're like fighting like giant Pokemon, and you can like send your Pokemon out with guns and shoot one yourself. Your okay, the main character is Jolt Hog. It's done. It's over. Now, if Alan Wick was called Jolt Hog. Like, that's a name. I wonder if it would have sold better. Yeah. Because they took a long time to even make Alan Wake 2. That's 13 years. Yeah. But it's a game that's got good word of mouth. Yeah, Pal World, it's been delayed. It was supposed to come out this year, but it's coming to Xbox uh, eventually uh, next year. Blah, 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 Miyamoto quote about unfinished games. I get it. Lord of the Rings Return to Moria uh, was announced. coming. Why? Coming this autumn. Create your own dwarf. Going to Moria, rebuild Casa Doom, and make your towers and fight off enemies. It's a co-op survival craft 'em up, is what I saw it referred to as. I have tried to play these types of games. Yeah, I've gone out of my way to try and learn certain video games like this. No Man's Sky being one of them because I love space shit. I like crafting. Yeah, but at a certain point, I was just like, no, no. I like <laughs> I like creative mode in Minecraft because you can make fun portraits and shit. But is it bad that I much would rather play Gollum? Like this is this looks like a fairly competent whatever game that I wouldn't like. Gollum looks like a horribly incompetent game that I would laugh at, and that sounds more interesting to me. Uh, I, I, I still really, can't I, believe that was sixty dollars. I really want to try Gollum. You'll find it. it once it's like super free or cheap or three dollars at GameStop. But five uh, bucks maybe you'd throw that. Uh, Return to Moria. Uh, Co-op with up to eight friends, fall 2023 for PS5, Xbox, and Windows. Uh, John Reese davies voices the trailer, so that was just cool to hear. I know. I like Gimli. I like Gimli fine. I wonder how much they had to pay him. I'm Gimli. Can I have my check? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, using the Lord of the Rings has kind of gone through a downturn lately. But they're also needing money. So they're squeezing. Yeah, unfortunate. What are your thoughts on Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name? Uh, sounds fine. It's just another Kiryu story. Classic Yakuza style, which I'm surprised they didn't just call this Yakuza, the man who lost his name. because Well, ju well so Judgment was supposed to be the, like, 
the room like yakuza like it was supposed to be the continuation of that kind of play style mm -hmm. while uh uh like a dragon was gonna end up being like the rpg that it was always going to be yeah like, but the tricky i mean the weird thing is like a dragon it was what yakuza like a dragon yes which, which is yakuza 7 which is essentially also just calling it like yakuza yakuza because don't they call it like a dragon over there mm -hmm. and to me, I don't know. Just call this Yakuza the man who erased his name because at least it would cue everybody like, this is uh, Kazuma Kiryu. And honestly, I don't like that style of gameplay as much. Uh, it was great 10 years ago when that was the, the prevalent style of the time. But uh, I think the beat him up is still really good in yeah. these games. Uh, you just have to get further along and you have to unlock some combos. It unfortunately just takes a lot of time to get to the point where I found it really entertaining. Yeah. A like lot of time. A, yeah. It's just a shitload of time. I also, I was super excited about Ichiban. I didn't play the Judgment games, but I liked that there was a new protagonist with a different perspective. Cosmos Kiryu is great. Mm -hmm. I also have had enough. He's cool as the shows up and makes a guest appearance guy at this point. To give him more story, I don't need it. No. But it's fine. I th well, they lost the, the actor for Judgment. Oh, they did. Because it's a real person's likeness. Yep. Yeah. That's the that's the reason there will be no more of those. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, like, that's the unfortunate part, but I I get the feeling that this is kind of what it's going to have to be now. They kind of had to come up with a backup plan. Yeah. They're making a lot more of these games, though. They must be very profitable for them to be making, like, other, you know. Well, they uh, sell them for higher prices in Japan. They're not like hyper popular but they have that niche market thing so they're able to charge a little bit more and devoted the mm -hmm. people that play them are devoted that's november 9th ps5 xbox and windows uh did you see the trailer for under the waves at all i did not um it's an undersea exploration game this trailer came out before the ocean gate but this trailer shows the ocean gate that yeah uh you go in submarines and you also get out and you go explore wrecks it looks very, I didn't see combat. It looked like there might be some other like influences or things going wrong. So maybe it turns into a little bit of like underwater horror exploration. Yeah. But just the fact that it was very Zen and just about atmosphere. This is an indie title, right? Um, I don't know if it's indie, but it's, um, you play a Stan, a diver from a techno-futurist version of the 1970s. That sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, August 29th, everything but the Switch. I And it's, you know, the graphics are, like, realistic. They look cool. I thought thought it looked exciting. I, be I believe in it. Yeah. The whole bunch of other things. There was Call of Duty Season 5, Marvel Snap, Fay Farm. Uh, Jordan says she would like to play Fay Farm. So... The I said, cozy I think, farming co-op game. I think it looks stupid, but uh, whatever. <laughs> I think it looks horrible and dumb and will give me a headache. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, I saw that on the Nintendo Direct. I'm like, <laughs> next? <laughs> yeah, a bunch of other games. Honestly, we can skip so much of this shit. To, like, to the end. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Are you excited for it? You will play it. I will play it. Um, I will have to get a PS5 first. I'm saving up some cash. Uh, I I don't know, man. It, I think it's fine. And this is kind of just showing you how beautiful this game truly looks. Mostly. They give you like snippets of the idea of what's going to happen in this game. But I, I just wonder... Because if it's like a journey, is it just going to be like a straight line? The unknown journey continues. Um, what I thought was very exciting, the best thing that I liked from the trailer was the open world. Being out of Midgar and just having that whole landscape to run around in, that, that was beautiful and it was very different looking. Because, you know, Remake was beautiful hallways. Little bits of exploration and side quests, but mostly Sometimes like some a lot of A to B. A lot of sea, sh a lot of shanty houses. Uh, I, I like. I, here's the thing. I like remake. I like it fine. I don't think it's like anywhere near what my feelings for Final Fantasy VII itself are. 
Yeah. Um, I think it's just a completely different thing. And I also don't really like how Square Enix is really leaning into the action for yeah. RPG elements, which can be fun and entertaining. They should do Final Fantasy Gaiden, just throw back to an old school well, that's, tactical, or, or not tactical, but like turn-based RPG. They are technically giving us those. There's no like lack of those. There's like Octopath Traveler 2, Bravely Default still want, going. You want the Final Fantasy name though. You do. And it, I mean, the people that spend money on RPGs, it's hard to, for people to know when like, because there's a fair amount of turn-based RPGs that have been showcased. But if people don't know what Silent Hope is or what all these other like weird names are, oh yeah, play Silent is a uh, Star Kirkbomb. He doesn't know his parents, and there's a Monster King. Turns out his dad might be involved. Some people like that, and I and you know it's like uh, Dragon Quest Eleven still proves that that can be done. Yeah, uh, in a very sophisticated that's, way. That's Dragon Quest. It's, that's another like big name. I know, but they're still doing the turn based. I've heard Octopath 2 is amazing. I've heard, I hear it's great. I just can't spend more money on video games. I heard Final Fantasy 16. People, pretty good. Well, no, people hate it. Really? It, sh- it shows up very hard in the first act, and then they say it falls into the worst aspects of the Final Fantasy franchise and completely falls apart. Really? Uh, all the reviews that I've read pretty much say that. Is it just the story? or They say it's like super promising and interesting before it just evolves into the most... like classic schlock is it just a hack and slash then i don't does know the gameplay get better because i hear the game i hear the, i haven't looked up anything about this because i actually legitimately want to be surprised by this I'm and not gonna, i will play it i'm but, not gonna play the demo like no. i do i will do the same thing i am gonna play this game and but uh, i was surprised that reviews the day of for like the next day were just very tepid it's what i could have predicted anyway uh, for some reason, the way they tell stories now, especially in these uh, almost anime-inspired kind of like settings and stuff like that, they kind of lose the plot. They don't leave you with what's interesting. And then it truly does ev- devolve into like, but now there's like this other thing and the other thing affects all the other stuff. And you're just like, I liked how this was before. I want political intrigue and I want power dynamics I don't need to fight God again. I've been doing it my entire life. Yeah. Which is why you love 12. Well, until it falls off the end and it turns into like a big power. I mean, it loses the political edge near the end, which they all do. But 12 is mostly like interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But FF7 Rebirth uh, it shows Nanakai or Nanaki, however you want to say it. Plus Yuffie join your team. And that's cool. Uh, they will both be fully playable. It mm-hmm. shows that shows you writing chocobos. Uh, the opening of the trailer it says a tornado stormed through Midgar, and then they show bodies getting carried off, and it looks like um, Red Thirteen, Tifa, Barrett, and Aerith. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is uh, it's multiverse fake. bullshit or if it's fake news. I think it's Midgar saying like, "Hey, we killed him." Yeah, I would imagine, but it's the Shinra Corporation, probably. It'll look double bad though as soon as they emerge again. But that's, I mean, it's fake news. But they also seem to be like they showed Zach alive at the end of remake, so there might be like an alternate reality that bleeds. Well, this in. definitely is. It's maybe going to be this like the whole thing has been an alternate reality, though. Maybe Zach will merge into this universe from theirs multiverse bullshit. Sure, it's possible. It's possible. But they also show what looks to be like those tattooed figures, the hooded figures. Mm-hmm. And one of them looks like it's Cloud, um, which Cloud was gone for about five years. But that was him locked up in Nibelheim. Yeah, that's true. So um, and then at the very end, Sephiroth says uh, it's as he's slashing Tifa and he says, I killed her, you know, who is she? So maybe they're like going to change the original story. Like maybe Tifa was also. Well, what's the theory here that we had prevalent in the uh, discussion when we were first starting Raw Dogs? It's that there's three Sephiroths. Weren't we saying that? I don't remember. There's the actual Sephiroth and then there's the Sephiroth fucking with time. Well, yeah, the only real, real Sephiroth is the one in the crystal at the heart of the world. Um, right. In the, in the game setting, mm-hmm. like the modern setting. Well, that was true in Final Fantasy VII as well. 
Yeah, yeah, but like, there's also the earlier times when Sephiroth mm. was definitely in Nibelheim, right? Like, as, right. Yeah, but then he is projecting himself, and yeah. So the gameplay, I don't. The it gameplay, looks cool. the gameplay will be good with this. It I will. Um, they showed Elena. They showed Junon Harbor. They showed the inn at Calm, the Chocobo place. Chocobo Farm, and it gets all the way to Nibelheim. I think the climax will be... Because there's uh, only going to be three of these. I uh, I think the climax is going to be Nibelheim. Um, we'll see. But that's the furthest they've showed us. Right. And that seems like a very logical like end story moment spot. I wonder if any progress you had or item, some of the items you had in the previous one will transfer over. Because this, to me, is emblematic of the idea of like... Why wouldn't you just continue with what you had? Because my favorite thing is I want to go through the whole story with all the items I've gathered and all the things I've done and the experience. But what if Roche shows up on his motorcycle with a gun outside and he says, give me all your weapons and your material and your armor. And they're like, Roche is too cool. Give it up. That's I think it's a perfect way to start everyone back over. I I just don't need to have all my progress erased. I mean, there's going to be no way for me to get it it's, back. It's but. every single video game, though. Hmm. Most not so not it not really anymore. A lot of a lot of games let you keep all the shit you had. You know what feels good is at the beginning of Tears of the Kingdom when Link shows up, big dick energy, 30, mm-hmm. 20 hearts, thirty hearts, and dis- oh, you're finally playing it. Well, I I mean that's the beginning of the game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like when you see all those hearts just get sucked out of him, that is such a like defeating feeling. Yep. I like and, it, though. and I like seeing my progress taken away rather than. Mm-hmm. Sora's like, I forgot it all in a dream again. Mm -hmm. Like there was a story purpose as to why it's not like Samus getting her head hole knocked up and then just like, and then like whoopie doo, it's all gone. You know, Samus in the new Metroid Prime 4 should go full alien and have her get like an alien being inside of her and her be like a mother tale. Make like humanize her again and make her human feeling. Sure. And it could be exploring a station, trying to get stuff to get it out of her. And then it's affecting her thinking and altering the world around her. I mean, there's already Dark Samus. Okay, I guess I haven't played all of them. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Rebirth, though. Uh, RV Gamer asks if they need to play Crisis Core or Ever Crisis. I would say probably not. I would say maybe. I don't know. Uh, not Ever Crisis. Uh, Crisis Core. Crisis Core. It would inform you, but also you could watch a YouTube recap for 20 minutes. I, I, will, would I wonder like- if they changed the ending. I don't think so. Maybe I would like to play the new remake of Crisis Core, or the remaster, but it's low. I tried on my playing list. it on the PSP. I wasn't a fan. And Rai Rai said he was very hyped to see Nanaki Red Thirteen. Yeah, fucking shit up. Yeah, that was Summer Game Fest. Um, we're gonna take a quick break to hear from another amazing show from the Tokyo Beat Podcast Network, and be right back. Let's do it. <laughs> of podcasts only three men are willing well, well dude what are you doing james you told me to do the the promo for the podcast right that's all we're yeah, doing but i mean you know we could actually tell people about what we are i mean we're the famicast we're a bi-weekly show we talk about nintendo and games in japan uh, i'm danny and uh that was james and we got another guy what who are you again I, uh, I'm a, I'm the, I'm the saboteur. I'm the the henchman. I'm the, the interloper. That's uh that's Ty. He is our anime trash expert. <laughs> Digs around in some UFO catchers for it. check us out. We're in Japan. We like Nintendo most of the time. The Famicast only on the Tokyo Beat Network. Today's show was brought to you by Epos Gaming Audio. With a comprehensive lineup of both wired and wireless headsets, gaming amplifiers, microphones, and webcams, Epos has everything you need to experience the power of audio. Like their H6 Pro lineup, which features two versions, an open or closed headset. The closed headset allows you to tap into exceptionally detailed audio and seals out ambient noise, while the open version delivers natural high fidelity audio with an incredible soundstage. Both headsets include a magnetic detachable microphone and a sleek design that has no wild RGB configurations, just good design. Listeners can save 15% by visiting www.eposaudio.com slash gaming, entering code EPOSFRIEND15 at checkout. That is EPOSFRIEND15 at checkout. You can 
while away the hours, even though the storyline I could give a fuck about. It's so obnoxiously bad. I like the cinematics yeah, because it's Blizzard, right? Yeah. But everything else about this game is just like, I don't care who I'm helping. <laughs> I'm just killing shit. Like, that's, that's the whole point of this game. Give me the points to make yeah. me kill shit better. But why am I killing shit? I need to know who I am. Well, it just seems to me like it's just like, oh, uh, yep, another big scary demon is back. A, this time the demon is sexy. Whoa, I would argue that they were always sexy. That butcher? Come on. Well, I know you just like body horns. That's like your thing. Like yeah. Body ripples and horns and hard carapaces. Like a hard bug. carapaces turn me on in a weird way. I knew that about you. Yeah. But listen, now she's a sexy lady. Sexy lady. Who I guess created Sanctuary. I don't know. The lore, <laughs> the lore is I like, know. I'm just like, I'm just like, okay, kill her. Okay, great. Open world, though. The open world is fucking awesome. It's not just running through a linear thing. Yeah. Hey, hey everyone, and we're back. Um, Xbox Showcase is up next, June 11th. Did you watch the Fable trailer, Dylan? I did not. Richard Ayoade uh, is talking about how adventures are overrated. It's tongue-in-cheek. It feels like The Office. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about how he's a great farmer. And then... It's revealed that someone is at his door and they are a regular sized person, but he's a giant. Really? And it's them fucking up with this giant Richard Ayawade. I had only heard about the trailer. Uh, I, I don't know if there was really any gameplay revealed. I think it's mostly like a tone reveal. I wonder if it's going to play like the old ones because that was rough. I have, have never played, played the Fable games. I've heard that, like, I mean, it's I got think, a huge fan base. But I think of their time would probably be like if I played them back then, I'm sure they would have. Oh, been yeah. No, yeah. I thought the first Fable was like the most brilliant thing on the face of the planet. I played it on my cousin's Xbox. Yeah. Uh, in the sequels, they seemed fine. And then it kind of fell yeah. off. Uh, I don't know if it's it, maybe Fable 3 didn't sell that well. I, I don't know the stats, though. I, I listen. I'll play any game that looked that. <laughs> I'll play any game that's good. <laughs> uh, I know that sounds so stupid now, but yeah. To me, I didn't like the uh, mockumentary style of the trailer. I thought it was fine and funny, but to me, I'm like, it doesn't translate to video games. That's just not how the game is actually going to be, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a PC and Xbox Series exclusive, at least for now. No release date, but Game well, Pass Day the One. Microsoft Studio, so it's not going to. Yeah, not with the way that Sony keeps cock blocking them. It's not happening. Yeah, it's just important to note when some something is an Xbox exclusive because they need what they get. And this actually, I mean, it looks they're, they're it, getting quite a few. It's a nice trailer. It was yeah. a good trailer. I it doesn't really show much of anything about what's going to actually happen, but I it, it probably made someone out there very happy. There was a Star Wars Outlaw cinematic trailer. We're going to save that for the, the next thing we talk about afterwards. It's fine. Um, Persona 3 Reload. Dylan, how do you feel about it? I think it's fine. Make it more like Persona 5. Makes sense. Because 4 is your favorite, right? 4 is my favorite, yeah. You played 3 as well, though. I've beaten 3, yeah. And uh, people were upset online after this trailer came out because it was revealed that like the bonus... like character the female uh, the female protagonist which was on the PSP one is not a is not there no. yeah people were upset yeah I mean you you can be I, it's not I can see why having something like that taken away having it taken something. away feels bad yeah yeah I also think that I don't know maybe maybe he was working more with the original script maybe they just didn't have the funds for it I don't know what's going on over at Atlas. So it's also weird that they just re-release Persona three and four in their original form. Well, I mean, Persona Persona five has one main character. You don't decide how they look. Like maybe they just wanted to kind of unify it and make it because you can still play as the female character in the the ones that have just been released on Xbox. Yeah, and Nintendo. Yeah, you can still you can still do it. But just not for their new, not for their new one. I wonder if it's a budgetary thing because this is a remake. This is probably going to be a niche thing because yeah. the thing already exists and they just released it onto Game Pass. So 
I don't know, man. Maybe they just made a calculated choice. Maybe they saw their player base and were just like, well, some people are going to really care and some people aren't. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're just, if there's a big market. I guess the more they make it look like Persona 5, the more people will care. Yeah, they will. Yep. And I think that if they also have like Persona a, 5 was just such a jumping on point for people that I think it's much like Tears of the Kingdom or uh, Breath of the Wild. It's people now, now, they, now have this expectation about it. And they can resell all their previous shit because people like, oh, this is number five. I want to know more. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's coming out early 2024 for everything but the Switch. Um, Avowed looks Skyrimish from Obsidian Entertainment. It looks very Skyrimish to me. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with it. I'm not jazzed, but if now, it, if it's you know, Obsidian did uh, the outer the outer worlds, outer wilds or worlds, worlds. Okay, I'm wilds. Confused. Wilds is the more experimental indie one. Yeah, and worlds is basically Fallout. Okay, so they're <laughs> they're doing Fallout and Skyrim clones. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it it seems like this is what people want, though. When uh, if you read earlier to like probably yesterday that they're basically saying like, Oh yeah, the next Skyrim or the next uh, elder scrolls isn't going to come out until like five years from now. Yep. So, and that's what I expected, but why would they show that trailer three years ago if they weren't actively working on it? They needed um, investors and money and stocks to so go, to go the so way they disgusting. You can't, you can't, it's it, you can't rope your fans like that. It's disgusting, but it's also a company needing to survive and to like make it make the numbers they need for a quarter. Dude, Starfield is going to make so much fucking money. Buku Bonanza, it's going to be huge. I, it better be good because part of me thinks it's going to be a bland mess, and that upsets me. The trailer didn't make me feel that way. Yeah, uh, Flight Simulator 2024 mm-hmm. had a trailer. Always looks great. These are great things that they keep building on. I am not a a PC gamer, and I don't think they really play as well on Xbox. They play okay on Xbox. Um, I was at, thinking about getting a flight stick. I think it would be much more yeah. fun that way. They're adding rescue missions, delivery missions, VIP charter service, air racing, experimental flights. I think there's even hot air balloons. And there's a dune crossover. There's a dune crossover. That's cool. Well. I want to fly over Arrakis yeah. in an ornithopter. Those are all words that you know, and I don't. I mean, it's the big the dragonfly. Dragon yeah, they're called ornithopters. I don't think they'd work though. I think they would. Okay, <laughs> because it's fake. <laughs> it's a good point. I like that flight simulator. Is like we're not going to have to deal with the physics for this part. No, I mean, like why? Why the hell not? To also, it could be some unimaginable tech that in, it takes place ten thousand years in the future. So, if, if flight simulator really wanted to push it, they could also do like you know an Indiana Jones crossover where it's not an actual anything other than the plane that he flies in from this place to that, that place. That is actually really cool. And you can even just have some you dialogue. You the locations in, oh, and then they kind of banter with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just seeing it from, Mr. Jones, wake up. Something like that. Short run, I'm sleeping. Yeah. That guy, the guy who uh, was in Everything Everywhere All at Once, Ken Hu Kwan. Ki Hu Kwan. Ki Hu Kwan. Uh, man, he, like, at first I found him, like, kind of admirable and, like, nice. I'm like, oh, cool. And now it's just like, are you just dumb? He's, he's overplayed this, whatever this is. He's earnest and, uh, innocent. (laughs) Oof, that, that is a combo that just screams idiot to me. So, uh. I don't think he's dumb. I just think he's, uh, innocent, pure, uh. I don't know. He, he embodies that character from the movie, I think. We'll uh we'll put that in the quotes for when it inevitably comes out that he did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Dogcast calls him earnest and innocent. <laughs> yeah, they'll use us in the headlines. I like that. The Daily Beast. <laughs> um Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth had a trailer. Yeah. Ichiban awakens naked on a beach in Hawaii. He doesn't realize he's naked. Uh, a lady speaks English at him and his dong. Some guy's like, whoa, nice dong, bro. Word. And, yeah, and, he, goes, and he, goes, he goes, oh. And that's it. 
That's all you. I mean, it, it's actually I think a good teaser trailer. That's fine because it shows that he's in Hawaii. It shows that there will be some English uh, early, new, new early location. 20, 20, early twenty twenty four, huh? Yeah, everything but the switch. Well, of course. And when I say everything, that means PS four, five, X Bone, XSX, and Windows. Uh, Jesus. Unless I specify, but uh, I'm excited. I like Ichiban. I want more. Sure, I'm, I'm into it. Kuni, uh, Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess. A new series from Capcom, Japanese folklore hack and slash. Uh, the art design I found very striking. It mm. does look kind of like a throwback to you know the Ninja Gaiden style of gameplay, but there was just a lot of cool enemies. There was like a what looked like an Oblivion portal with this like crazy monster with a weird head kind of on top of it. Um, I'd have to see what the gameplay shakes out as, but I think it looks cool. It's going to be a day one game pass. Oh, that's excellent. Yep. And it's PS5 as well. I don't even, I don't even, I won't even have to worry about it. It'll just pop up one day. Uh, and you know, sometimes they even do the pre download so I can just like download it and forget. And then two weeks later, I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, cool. Sometimes I do the pre download and then it says it didn't download it and then it has to re download the whole thing. Get your shit together, Xbox. Honestly, that's what happened with uh, uh, Jedi Survivor. I downloaded the whole thing. I waited three hours. That sucks. And then for some reason, it didn't register or whatever, and then it just started doing it again. And I was like, well, that's what I was going to do today. But and you're like, I'm not going outside. I ended up cleaning my house, so good on you. Uh, General Motors announced a partnership for Forza Motorsport, and I couldn't care less. No. Elder Scrolls Online has a DLC or something. Overwatch 2 got a story mode or something. Persona 5 Tactica. This announced. looks cool. I like this. Tell it's me, interesting. tell me your thoughts on it. I think it looks pretty good. You know, I like tactical RPGs. Yeah, I mean, like this. If it's good and it still plays like Persona a little bit, throwing out Bufus, Agnes, which will be there. Yeah, and then you still get to fuse demons. It's not like you're just playing this kind of thrown together mishmash. It's not like it was a different tactical RPG and they just changed the characters to this to like fit in it looks like it's built around the world i wonder uh, if it's like canon well i hope so i would imagine but also this is suffering from the final fantasy 7 compilation thing persona 5 strikers they fine. just need a new persona game it has been it has been six seven years they are in the business of everything but six right now they surely are I mean, the story seems interesting. You're actually like transported to another world. Um, I thought the character designs looked really nice, and I think the that, cool, cool art design, like the diff, yeah. like the misshapen characters, I like. It reminds me sort of of Mario and Rabbids, though not really. Yeah, uh, if only because it's like these characters you already know just slapped into this style of gameplay. Um, I thought everyone looked cool. I don't think I'd be annoyed. It. It's cool to see the gang back, but I also never even played that Muso version. Strikers? I've never played that. So. I have it. I played it for 10 minutes, and I'm like, okay, I'm busy. Yeah. But uh, this and, is and com fair enough. coming out November 16th. It is coming out for everything, and I think this would be a great game on the Switch, but it's day one Game Pass, so I'm playing it on Xbox. Oh, but, yeah. And then if it's really, really good, and it gets down to only $30 on a big sale for the Switch, then maybe someday. This is perfect for the Switch. It is perfect for the Switch. Uh, just, your comparison to Mario and Rabbids makes me want to play it on the Switch. Yeah, I mean, it looks fun. I love fusing demons. It's my favorite thing. Uh, another, I, I like it when there's a game that's not anything I'm familiar with. Like, it's not a, just another iteration. That sounds exciting. This one's called Still Wakes the Deep. It is a hmm. horror set on a deep sea platform. And horror with, and plus water makes me happy. So you're out there on like a rig, kind of like uh, the Metal Gear Solid 2 location. The worst thing in the world I can imagine. Like when we thought that they were still alive down there. The fucking worst. The fact that like people I were talking would, about everything other than like, no, there are five people in a minivan yeah. size mm -hmm. thing shitting in that room, possibly yeah. without even light. In the dark. Yeah, with, with in the dark and maybe some systems are still on. Like, ooh, no. And uh -uh. That, that toilet was only designed for... Uh, small amounts of urine too. Well, because it, they're not supposed to be down there for that long. Well, 
luckily it ended quick for them and now they're human toothpaste in the ocean deep yeah dude uh imagine being the guy who took everyone down there and everyone is just sitting there dying looking at you oh well, no yeah oh god well he just it is the worst kind of he, horror he deserved his failure i don't think any of these other people really did because you tend to trust people you consider intelligent to do what they're supposed to be doing and you trust spending that much money you're like i'm not gonna get fucked over yeah it's clearly like a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and people have gone down there it was successful like eight or ten times or something yeah, but it, the moment you showed me that I was going to be bolted into this thing is the moment I go, no, mm -mm. well, uh, I, no, man, uh, is, James, only, is James Cameron here? I'll go down with him. I, I would trust. I would go anywhere with James Cameron. <laughs> I, I would. I would trust James Cameron with my life if it involves submarines. Yep, anything. Yeah, but this was made by a guy. This was just made by a dude. He, with he was a explaining Logitech Pro controller. Yep. Oh my lord! And not even a good one. Uh, and he's like, it's meant to like you can like kind of hand it around. It's Bluetooth, but we have backups. I'm like your system is on a Bluetooth setup. It it's astonishing. The fact that Bluetooth doesn't work for me sometimes is all I have to say. But he's also like, I got sometimes these lights. My ear pods. These lights are from Home Depot. Believe it or not, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And no. then there's interviews of him saying he doesn't believe in safety standards and they ruin yeah. innovation. Yeah. Uh, mm. To hear that it was a catastrophic implosion was the best news that could have came out of that Oh, yeah, scenario. they didn't even feel it. They're fine. Like, I, I, I listened to what a physicist and a mortician, it was a YouTube video. They explained in detail what, they actu what actually happened to them as forms, as bodies. And apparently they just became like toothpaste. Instant gel? No, strings. Wow. Because it it's like a Play-Doh like set like it just any hole any oof yeah the, uh, the pressure is intense Pr pressure is insane oh my God. i've seen so, a beer tank blow up before so in like a, a lot of these like civilian style like tourist craft uh, what they will do to show you just how crazy like the pressure is down there like the ones you trust and obviously they tie like a high stress like string to a styrofoam cup they take it all the way down with them and then when they come back up, it's a ball about this big. Mm. Insane. Cool. Bad stuff. Cool I'm stuff. never I'm never going that deep underwater. I'm never going to do it. No. I just know now. It's just like I can die happy knowing that I will never do that. that the feeling of claustrophobia. And oh, no. Uh, but this game looks cool. It's first person. It's on a uh, deep sea platform like a oil rig. Yep. And okay. something goes wrong. It's just got the right vibes, the right atmosphere. Day one game pass. Which means I'm going to play it. Which means I don't really have a choice. It comes out next year, uh, 2024, for PlayStation, Xbox, and Windows. Phantom Liberty, Cyberpunk 2077, starring Idris Elba. Because who is, who is as hot and beloved as Keanu Reeves? Idris Elba. I mean, Idris Elba's no Johnny Silverhands. Well, and then, then Cyberpunk 2077 DLC 3 will be Henry Cavill. Isn't Tyler making us play that one? He changed his mind, I think. What's what's he going to do? I forget. Uh, I have the list somewhere. It's fine. I considered moving mine to Pikmin, but Okami is such a good palate cleanser. that. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I mean, yeah. Uh, then we have City Skylines 2. I do really like the first one. I played it on console. Yep. I had it on my PS4, not your PS4, before I sold it. Yeah. And it looks pretty cool. They're great games. It is so in depth. You've got to have you have you played any of it? I played City Skyline one. Yeah. I played it uh getting the plumbing set up and like making sure that the infrastructure works the way it should. You have to program traffic patterns. Mm. It's wild. Because if you make like a small town. It yeah. doesn't matter. But the moment you start building skyscrapers, it just becomes a total mind fuck. This, Some people are really good at it. This is on par with me uh, with like Flight Simulator. Just incredibly fun yeah. and accurate simulation games, which I could see this being a textbook for uh, city infrastructure college classes. Um, I don't, I mean, it could be used for that because it mm -hmm. does teach you so much about knowing how to fully. Uh, 
run and develop civilization. Uh, it's wild. Uh, it's definitely something that I think I would love if I had time and energy to put into it. This is one of those games that certain people, it's just their game. Yeah, They play this game and they play it over and over like obsessively and they don't pay attention to anything else. It's just that game. It's like The Sims. Yeah. It's like some people, that's all. That's the only game they'll ever play. The Sims, though, it's like catering to uh, the silly drama and like life fantasies where this is just like... Truth be told, most of the people I know who play The Sims are most interested in the house designing. Yeah, which is... They That's don't cool. really care for the people living in it. Yeah. They'll test it out to see if it's actually like functioning. But then like Drew Carey shows up. Um, Katy Perry's there too. Do you remember the Katy Perry expansion? No, I oh don't. But God. that's amazing. Um, it's awful. Apparently everyone hates it. What's going to be <laughs> my favorite thing about City Skylines 2 is watching someone's 30 minute long YouTube video showing their perfect city they made and explaining it. And I'll be like, that's that'll I could watch that and be happy. Dude, that is called my nighttime ritual. Yeah. I will, I will just be like, I know I'm going to fall asleep to this mammoth documentary. Mm -hmm. And like this kind of shit, it's perfect for me. So what I did here with the electricity and yeah. the way I have the grid set up this part of town, I'm like, yep. It makes complete sense, man. Way Brad to go. Bradley Lake. <laughs> Plus. Plus. Heart. What uh, is it on YouTube? Is it the upvote or is it a heart? Whatever it is. I completely forget. Um, City Skylines 2, October 24th. A1 Game Pass. So I will be playing it. I didn't put this in bold, but I do want to talk about it. Uh, Clockwork Revolution. Mm -hmm. Bioshock Infinite 2, essentially. Oh, okay. Uh, it looks exactly like a alternate universe steampunk society. It's maybe leaning more into steampunk and robots. There's even an enemy that drops down, which isn't a big daddy, which isn't the, the songbird, but it is a big guy. And... Listen, there's a hole to be filled that no one has filled for over 10 years now. Yeah. I think that this is perfect. Like, let someone else do it because there is apparently another Bioshock in the works. Without Ken and Levine. It has been for a while. That's fine. Yes. I don't think Ken Levine is, much as an, is as much of an auteur as people like to believe he is. I think other people could get similar results without all yeah. of the negativity. Yeah. And they could probably do it in a shorter amount of time. And with less of a celebrity complex. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, this game looks looks cool. I'll have to look this one up, actually. Uh, control the past and change the future. Uh, it's shooting. You can, like, alter your environments. You uh, accidentally change. It's very much... I just fear another Atomic Hearts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which I didn't mind the first part, but it didn't. I didn't stick around for it. Mm-mm. Yeah, Clockwork Revolution, it says coming in due time. And then they they announced a new Xbox Series S, one terabyte, and Carbon Black for 350 bucks coming September 1st. Then there was a Starfield showcase. Which um, I watched all of. Immediately after, 40 minutes long. What were your initial thoughts? I, I was worried that this game was going to be bland. Um, it is kind of... They, the thing that... Bethesda does with this style of game, which I think we can just call like, what would we, it's a, it's a, it's an Elder Scrolls Fallout like now, like, uh, it's just, we can just call it a Bethesda game. An open world RPG. Right. Although this one's going to be, have probably a, a lot more shooting, shootiness to it, but it's yeah. still the same thing. Um, I was worried because I really like the humor in Fallout 4 and I like the weirdness of things in Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Now that they're kind of going like full sci-fi and they're kind of making it like hard sci-fi, they're not really leaning into any fantastical elements. I was worried that they were going to lose a bit of their charm. It would feel too too clean and sterile and exactly. perfect rather than like some fun rough edges. Yeah. But when I saw especially like ship customization, when yeah. I saw character customization, when I saw like the perk trees, I kind of changed my mind. I was... Yeah. I was hopeful either way, but I didn't trust it. And seeing some of this gameplay, it looks fun. And the, the shooting looks solid. And it looks like there's, if you notice in some of the trailers, there's an, a, like an auto assist for the aiming. So that people who don't want to like 
really have to be a first person shooter player. Yeah. They can just they can do that. And I like that it's third person or first person. I mean, all the games are. It, but to get the confirmation. Um I'm glad first person exists because that's the only way I play shooting games. It's, it's the only way that I play Bethesda games. Yeah. Um visit over a thousand planets. Not everyone is filled with quests. Some are barren besides resources, as I would expect in a world galaxy like in a galaxy that's what you expect well one of the things that if anything, i think there's probably gonna be too much life out there there's probably i mean there should be life on one maybe two planets if they want to be technical technical well in the in the early part of the showcase they it shows you touching down and going to this like abandoned mining facility and i said how many of these mining facilities am i going to see how many of these assets am i going to see how many am i how many that look exactly like this and am I going to see in this game? And that's my biggest concern because there's nothing that takes me out of a game more than repeating environments. Even Diablo 4 to some degree has that, like you can see that hallways were reused, but given a different texture. Yeah. And then the same sections of it are in style are reused over and over again. So I don't know, man. Like, is this just... It depends on what the player gets out of it, right? Maybe... You don't do all those side quests, but in all the Elder Scrolls games, I do every single side quest I can get. Uh, there will be a point where I go to every single one that's available and go through them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the lighting is determined by the type of star in the system. Uh, the planet Ooh. tech generates planets as procedural content. So there's handcrafted content where they will also be these characters or these quests on a planet, but the planet generates around that and they can be in different spots. So people will have similar experiences, but they will also be their own and individual in different ways. This is, these are the promises being told. See, I worry also because they bragged about radiant quests in, in Skyrim when literally it was just like, I just need this back. Go get it. Come back. I don't know. It maybe. I mean, they better have gotten a long way from there. I would fucking hope so because I'm not interested in fetch quests anymore. Really, in games, yeah. Go get the thing unless there's something compelling about that. You can change it up. You can do stuff like that. I mean, like The Witcher Three. It's mostly like go out and kill this monster, but the way to kill the monster is almost the most interesting aspect about it because they have different weaknesses and you have to figure that out. It, it depends. Am I going to be just a space psychopath in this game? Yeah. I, I truly wonder, because the moment they said I could be a space pirate, I was just like, well. Not only can you craft ships, you can purchase ships, mm -hmm. you can steal ships. And yes, you will be boarding people's ships, killing the innocents aboard, um, and then plundering that. And you could leave the ship or you can take it. Like, I, I think that the fact that you could do all these things, uh, space combat, you can fight it as um, spaceships. You mm -hmm. can board them. You can change where you put the power. So, like, forward thrusters. I need everything on the shields. Yeah. I like that. That's very cool. It sounds cool, at least the way they explain it. It. And seeing some of the images, I was kind of reaffirmed and I was kind of soothed. I was like, okay, like there, the guy was talking about how you're flying around and, oh, there's a, a bunch of these like cultists in a ship, but I chose a perk that allows me to kind of move past them undetected because they think I'm one of them. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like shit like that. I kind of like how you kind of have to stick with an idea and then roll with it. Yep. I don't know. Um, character creation looks pretty robust. Uh, you get party members. Some of them are strictly like people you can put in charge of outposts. Some travel and fight with you. Uh, I yes. better have a cool robot companion. Uh, there is romance. Mm. Mm. Combat, uh, extensive mod system, and tons of customization. They say much like the ships, your weapons can be customized. Uh, they, Todd Howard is a man who knows how to say all the right words as long as those words are backed up. Yeah. Well, he's lost a bit of my faith, but I also really like Todd Howard. Yeah. I think he's cool. Like, it's just like, all right. He's, yeah. got, he's, got, he's a good idea, man. It's when I think things are beyond his control that they get to a point where they his ideas don't flourish the way they should. I mean, Fallout 76 still has enough of a fan base that they keep releasing story content. 
and at this point i've heard it's in i guess polished enough to where it's, it's in working shape yeah yeah <laughs> um part of me watching this was thinking no man's sky no man's skyrim and part of it's like oh it's mass effect uh it's hard not to those comparisons just come to your mind everything kind of looked like mass effect and i hear like you you even can like lift enemies with like fields i'm like oh but if it if it works we get it like that's what things would be in the future it's fine you don't like everything is built off of someone's idea of what the future is this is going to be a big big game this and game is going I, to sell so many copies or not because it's going to be on day one game pass i think they're already paid out yeah i think they're fine and i think that they i think that they will end up using the user data to basically say to add that to the sales but maybe they only consider like a portion of that an actual sale yeah but it, they're tracking what we're playing when we're on game pass anyway because you have to be online yep so they'll probably have enough data to prove like oh people got an xbox just for this and they'll be able to like calculate that within like like with pure certainty i think it's very smart of them to also this is a system selling game th that's why it's smart for them to do a starfield direct or whatever the showcase whatever they called it much like essentially breath of the wild had its own thing for nintendo that one year yeah uh when you do have a game that you're this confident on and it's this big it's just smart and safe i think too I think they needed to assuage a lot of fears from fans of Bethesda games. And I'm a huge fan of Bethesda games, but they've had a lot of problems in the past and not just performance wise, but kind of just how the games work themselves. They, the I, balancing issues and all that. Yeah. Grand concepts that they're pretty, but if you look under the hood, there's not a lot in that car. Well, you know, Sky it, Skyrim I played the fuck out of, I bought it like yeah. five times. It's not a great game. But Halfway the world, through the game, it kind of buggers off. It kind of like becomes like enemies are too spongy and never felt balanced. I never felt no, like the combat no. made either any I sense. Was mur either I was whipping through people or I was just bashing my head against a wall. But regardless, I was underground fighting uh, the Falmer, exploring an ancient dwarven ruin, and nothing else has to work other than I know that's yeah. all you need. You just wanted to get through that quest to get the one weird item that might really cinch your character. Yeah, it's cool. I like that loop. I think that's a good gameplay loop. And yeah, as long as everything doesn't feel too samey in this world, I think I'm going to really love it. Yeah. I mean, if you can just play Pirate Simulator and just go steal ships, and if that's your option, that's a cool thing. I would be a noble pirate. I'd probably only attack like military vessels. Just pillaging, no raping. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Not on my crew. Well, you'd kick him out. You'd kill him. You'd execute him. Put him in the airlock. Put them in a tiny submarine and put them at the bottom of an at ocean. At the bottom of an ocean. It's just like, you really made this to kill me? And I'm like, yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Horrifying. Isn't that scary? <laughs> uh, yeah. September 6th, Xbox Series X and Windows. September 6th. That is so much closer than I... September and October, almost everything is getting released then. It's going to be an insane couple months. November's got some stuff. We'll see once the Nintendo hits, once Nintendo gets in the biz. But uh, yeah. Uh, God, fucking so many good games talked about this month. We have the Ubisoft Forward now. Which I didn't know about until I was doing my research. For I didn't either, but I have seen. Now listen. <laughs> I <laughs> Whatever there's seen, the now listen, I know something serious is coming. I have seen Avatar The Way of Water. And I really liked it. Okay. I, did I haven't like, seen it yet. I did not like the first one. I didn't love... The first one was great in it's theaters, fine. but it was bad at home. It's fine. It's a fine movie, but this one, it's extremely long. Yeah. A little plotting at first. Avatitties? Avatitties? You kind of see... You don't really see the titties. Okay. I heard that there was... They naturally don't have big breasts. Okay. So they're kind of small. Unlike us. Yeah, we've... It's Wisconsin, man. We're built, is what it's we're trying to say. Milky titties. We are we are yeah. thick like a milkshake over here. Yeah, we got to raise all of our Catholic children. Yeah. These are made of cheese, baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, I don't even know if they breastfeed in, on Pandora. But aside from that, I really enjoyed it. And I watched this trailer right after it. 
literally Jordan, Jordan went to bed and I said, well, I'm just going to stay up drinking whiskey and watching the way of water. Cause we started it and she was tired. Yeah. And I just, I was, after a while I stopped drinking and I was just invested. Yeah. I don't know if it got me at the right point in the right time, but I watched it again with her. I'm like, no, listen, this one's way better. She agreed. And now I'm kind of like, I'm kind of invested in this. So I might actually get Frontiers of Pandora if it does not feel like a Ubisoft clone. The trailer looks fine. Looks good. Looks great. Um, You're a Navi who was captured and raised by humans to be indoctrinated, but you break free and you rediscover the Navi culture. I like that. You fly the things, the little dragon boys. You shoot arrows. You you run, you jump, you shoot guns. It looks great. I mean, it looks good. I don't know much about it other than those things, but I want to ride the the fucking dragons. I've been to Pandora in Animal Kingdom. Oh, I'm so jealous. Why didn't you bring me back like ears? I if I had known. Uh, well, I didn't know I was going to like it this much. Do they have the tails? Do they sell the tails? No, maybe. I don't know. That'd we be had awesome. I we had like a, alcoholic, like blue and green drinks though that were based on Pandora. Oh, that's fun though. Carly and I liked them. Yeah, they had like a real dorky like a river ride which it's not like a thrill ride but they just have really nice animatronics that look great and then there was one where oh that's really cool they don't have room for rides there anymore so they don't build roller coasters they just have like these things you sit on and it's just hyper immersive like 3d and they shoot stuff at you and you're flying on the dragons and stuff it was pretty cool i like that i'm into it i mean i would go to uh pandora land is that what they call it they just, I think they just call it Pandora. But they actually, the whole place, it looks like floating rocks and everything, the way it's built. It's really cool looking. Man, I'm going. Yeah. Um, Frontiers of Pandora. It comes out December 7th for PS5, Xbox, Series that is X, a, that and is Windows. A, that is a perfect release window for this. It would not be able to compete with anything this year. No. Nope. If it did not come out. Because yeah. December now has just become, become like a dry month. Before where, the driest month. It's like the last bit. And yeah. there will be people that... Christmas presents. Oh, you like the Avatar film. Here's the game. Yeah. They will sell some for that. Yeah, they will. New Prince of Persia. The Lost Crown. 2D. I think it looks good. It looks fine. It looks like it could be fun. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. It's It sounds interesting and looks interesting. And from what I understand, hands-on, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I never played the Prince of Persia games, but... Good for them. They they describe it as a Metroidvania. I saw some people calling it. And yep. if it is, you have my attention. Uh, that comes out Feb- uh, January 18th for everything. Skull and Bones. They didn't say anything new about the game, but they brought a band out to play the theme song. <sighs> um, this game is going to be a disaster. The trailer looked cool that I saw, but it didn't show anything really either. No cinematics or, or no gameplay. But uh, closed beta is coming August 25th through 28th. Maybe, by all accounts, it should be my shit. Maybe completely. It will, maybe it'll be good. Maybe they waited long enough. I, I don't know, man. I Like Ubisoft, I just don't, I don't trust it anymore, man. Uh, what else do we have here? Three Assassin's Creed games. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. First person fighting, parkour, and assassination. Connor, Cassandra, and Ezio. This looks worrying, you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> what what the fuck? Well, they show a person. Why Connor? They show a person because they want you to explore American Revolution times 100%. Uh, Because it is a, a stunning time period. But I agree. The guy puts the headset on, and then they just show cinematics of someone running, like jumping off a building and stabbing people, and like a lot of movement that you cannot do in VR. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the teleporting. That's not what they showed in the trailer at all. And if they do it, the teleporting, I hate it. Uh, well, this is for the VR2, right? The VR2. Okay, so maybe people get less sick on the VR2. I, Have you well, heard it's any on feedback? MetaQuest 2. I'm not sure if it's coming to PSVR 2. Oh, I think it might only on, be MetaQuest. MetaQuest is a decent frame rate. Even then, I, I can't imagine the movement being good. I, may, but... I don't know. Maybe there's no bounce. Maybe it's just kind of a path you have to follow. I, I don't really care either way. I would I would play it if someone else had it, but I'm not touching that, yeah. obviously. I, I like Ezio. I mean, I like I like Connor. And I haven't played Escassandra yet, but I know that people like her a lot. 
She's so, one of the most popular ones. Yeah. It's just them selling more content. It's everything needs the VR port. Uh, Assassin's Creed, codename Jade. Free to play mobile game set in ancient China. The weirdest thing of this trailer, it looks like a good Assassin's Creed game. That's so fucked. It looks 100% like Assassin's Creed 2. And if it plays as good as the gameplay looked in the trailer, it, I would like a port of this for $20 on the arcade or whatever. Listen, man, I'll put it on my iPad Pro if it's good. Yeah. I don't see a reason not to. Yeah. But they finally went to ancient China for a mobile game. And then Assassin's Creed Mirage, uh, set in Baghdad in the 9th century. You play as Basim, previously seen in Valhalla as a street thief. And it sheds all of the new RPG mechanics to go back to the original formula. That's cool. You like it. Because I, 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 I love the new RPG mechanics, but I guess it's nice to have both. I don't like the... They were For a while, they were trying to kind of be Dark souls about it. That's how it felt. Um, I got Destiny feelings from Origins. Oh, God. Just the loot drops? Get out of here. I, I do not care. Give me interesting actual things to do instead of dropping loot. Yeah. Um, you know what? It it's People want this. People want the old style back. Yeah. I think... And I think this game isn't that big. I think it's kind of to Valhalla what, or to uh, Spider Man what Miles Morales was. Yeah. By my understanding, it's a little more closed. It's a little more intrigue. It's a little more. I don't know. Maybe if they add the right elements to it, maybe you got another great Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, I am curious about it. Uh, I like the original style that they abandoned after Brotherhood, and that just simple exploring assassinating wonky combat silly climbing it still works for me silly climbing oof yeah but it's a we'll see how it goes that's the amount of sea shanties i couldn't get just because they floated weird and you my guy was kind of glitching against the wall you hold this button and your guy just goes off to the right yeah great that comes out october 12th for everything but the switch Star Wars Outlaws. This is, uh, there was a cinematic trailer in the Xbox One, but the Ubisoft Forward actually had a gameplay walkthrough. Mm-hmm. It looks really good. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, the trailer shows the beginning of a mission. You and your little buddy alien pet, Nyx, you, you're stealthily ex- moving through this area. You can send Nyx to do distractions or hits buttons. Mm-hmm. You hop on this crate. It goes to the left. You like sneak around. At some point, you get away on like a speeder bike, and it turns into this open world where you're getting chased. You run into um, Amon Calamari, and then you get into a ship. It shows you going up into outer space seamlessly into space combat. Uh, I, The gameplay looks good from the trailer is what I took out of it. Yeah, I, You know what? With all Ubisoft games, if it's... I've got such fatigue for it still. I've been I've been in Ubisoft fatigue for probably what now since I started doing the podcast. Yeah. I don't know, man. But if Star Wars can, you're not fatigued on at the moment because of all of that good Jedi Survivor. Even now though, like I don't have an appetite for it. Yeah. Like I think truly I think Cal Kestis is my favorite Star Wars character just yeah. because I've spent so much time with him. Did and you I've, did you see Grogu? No, you don't see Grogu. Okay. Grogu in the game? No, I thought Grogu was your favorite. You have the tattoo. Oh no, that was just a that was just a wild Friday. That, that was a lark. <laughs> that was just a lark, you know. Now I can be like LOL. Like I was trying to be a meme. Because you wanted to sit on Grogu's face and no, now you can't. What I really wanted is I wanted to be internet viral. <laughs> but it turns out I hit that I hit that kind of like meme a bit too hard. <laughs> Because I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have got it done with his dick out. That's my biggest problem. Do we know? Or do, does uh, the the Yoda species? Because they don't even have a species name yet. No, but there were two of them in the Jedi Council. I'm, oh, there's Yaddle, so there's definitely females yeah. that have hair. Yeah, and is I'm Grogu so gonna, sexy? Is Grogu gonna have like a mullet in the next season? Oh Jesus! He should grow hair at some point. Do you think, think young Yoda had like? What is a swoopy haircut? What if Grogu grows a mustache? <laughs> well, he's biologically compared to... He's going to hit puberty eventually. Like two-year-olds. He's going to hit puberty eventually. Man. 
Uh, that'd be. I mean, well, I, have I, you heard? Have you heard the rumors? He, he's teaming up with Ray. Yeah, and guess who the villain? Who wants to be the villain? Idris Elba. Yeah, whatever. If, if the vil, if the villain is written good, Idris Elba can do it. I I think that I like Ray in theory. I like they Ray in four or in um, Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Yeah. Before they killed everything good about that trilogy I know. in Rise of Skywalker. If, as long as if in the first opening of the new movie, she's like, yeah, I changed my name back. That was stupid of me. I think she's still going to be Ray Skywalker. I hate it. I think it's fine. I think, I think it's symbolic. I think it's fine. Oh, crap. I think it's just them putting bows on things for fans. It, you, can get it, you can get upset about it all you want, but also, like, I think she saw Skywalker as, like, a legacy. Technically, either way you fucking put it, like, it's basically implied that Palpatine made Shmi Skywalker pregnant, right? Through the powers of the Force. Yeah, the implication. The powers of the implication. So he's kind of everyone's granddad anyway. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, Did you know the actor who plays the Emperor is two years than younger Harrison than Harrison Ford? Ford? I saw that on Reddit, and I wanted to die. I was like, oh, woof. I, I want to go see Dial of Destiny. I do, too. Yeah. It looks good. I like James Mangold as a director. Yeah, me too. And the fact that people are saying that they don't like this movie makes me think I will. Oh, man. Really? Reviews are already coming in? Some reviews are coming in. They're like, it, they're saying it's not as good as they want it. It doesn't live up to the hype. And I'm like, maybe that's uh, the de-aging past stuff is the only thing I'm worried about. Otherwise, it looked fine from the trailers. Yeah, for that one. off. For the three seconds for the trailer, that's as good as they got I've it. seen more than that. Okay. But whatever. Star Wars Outlaws comes out in 2024 for PlayStation 5 and Xbox. And that brings us to... Nintendo. The Nintendo Direct, which happened I rewatched that. Recently. I rewatched that this morning as well. Uh, it starts out with a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC pack called The Hidden Treasure of Area Zero. I hate to say it. I don't know if I give a fuck. Um, I didn't buy the Sword and Shield one either. Yeah. Um, I think, I think I'm blown out on that. Yeah. I think I got my fun out of it. I liked playing online, but I am not going to chase this thing to the ends of the earth. You know, it's just not worth it for me. Yeah. I had the game. Honestly, all these Pokemon should have been included in the main game. Are the, the new Pokemon, are they including older Pokemon? But you don't have a full national Dex, is what it's called in these newer games. Yeah. All the Pokemon are not there. It's a select. It's a select amount of them, and they they've been specifically catered to like the region and yeah. what's good against things and what's bad against things. Balanced. And so, balanced is a word I would maybe use because you're still throwing out those shitty Pokemon that no one uses and nobody really likes, like uh, Love Disc. Okay. <laughs> look up. Look up Love Disc. Okay. L U V. Than disc. So this, yeah, we're getting new areas, characters, and activities though as well. Some of it looked interesting. I like the look of the legendaries, like the the bear, the monkey, and the bird. I thought they looked great. Um, I just don't think this game looks very good. <laughs> I mean, visually compared to Love Disc, anything looks good. Yeah, you like Love Disc? That is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, man. It makes Unknown look thoughtful and cool. Yeah. Well, at least Unknown had a cool gimmick where they were all letters of the alphabet. Mega Love Disc looks like a thing almost. Yeah, but that's but, not but real. But the OG is horrible. Yeah, man. That's Gen 3, I think. I hate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Teal Mask comes out quarter three of this year, and the Indigo Disc comes out quarter four of this year. I might... There's going to be other things you want to play at the time. There's going to be way too much shit to do. I don't have time to go back. This is so unfortunate for them. I liked Scar. I, I thought Scarlet and Violet is the best I've played since Gen 5. Yeah. But if you can't keep me hooked long enough, like the end game content for uh, Scarlet and Violet is just not up to snuff. Um, it's mostly terror or like terror battles, terror raids. Okay. Where you you basically team up with like a mega version of a Pokemon that's really hard to kill, but at the end of it, you automatically get to catch it. Mm -hmm. And you develop strategies, and sometimes you get in there with people who don't know what they're doing, and you want to kill them. 
Mm. And then you wasted 15 minutes of your life trying to catch one Pokemon. I think we just got to give the Pokemon guns. It's, We're going to watch the full Power World trailer for you well, after after yeah, this. I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, I'm into it, but uh, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can. Just the way that I'm into whenever there's a new Power Rangers show, I'm like, I'm still. You still have my attention. I don't care anymore. But the new movie was okay. It was really stupid, but it was supposed to be. Incredibly stupid. It was supposed to be. They killed a Power Ranger in the first five minutes, spoiler warning. And I was like, they just fucking killed one of them. Well, the Power Ranger kind of killed herself. Also, she's dead. In real life, yeah. It's just impossible. Yeah. Uh, we had Sonic Superstars, Palia. Um, we already talked about Superstars. And then there was a lot of like games I don't care about. In the Nintendo Direct, but there was other ones like we mentioned before, like Persona 5 Tactica, which was cool. Yeah, yeah. I uh, Myth Force looks obnoxious. What? What do they mean? Like based on Saturday morning cartoons? I'm like, like the you style. Still, that means it's like fu- a He Man kind means, of Thundercats oh, kind say of thing. That. Don't say because like, Saturday morning cartoons means well, different things to different the, people. They can't mention them by like name. They could say inspired by, and I think they'd be fine. I think it'd be like. Uh, at least give me a genre, like a, a time frame. If they're saying like they're your favorite, like the eighties, your favorite the fantasy 80s. cartoons from the eighties, and then you cut to a guy in like leather straps, and oh my, oh it's He Man. Yeah, they're trying to do like a GI Joe kind of mask. Like this, I don't know. I don't know who this game is for because that I, that I don't. I I think I think it looks weird to a degree. Like I think that some of the character designs look all right, but yeah, this is a roguelike. It's one of the multiplayer. One of the hot topics of a lot of these games is like multiplayer and roguelike. It's not for me. Yeah. Um, unless it turns out to be some sort of like genius creation, I couldn't. I couldn't be bothered. Splatoon three is getting Splatfest again. Well, it has had Splatfest. This was just kind of a wet fart. They do Splatfests all the time, is what I'm saying. The okay. fact that they're announcing the next one instead of. Actually, anything of use. Choose your favorite ice cream and fight for the next two weeks. M- mint chocolate chip. Well, that's going to be for the hardcore people that don't care about ice cream, but they but just want to be. that was my, that's technically my favorite out of the three. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, vanilla can fuck itself most of the time. Vanilla's good. I don't like strawberry, though. I no. I like ice cream. So I would be probably mint chip, but why not just choose chocolate? Because then you would have the Neapolitan flavors. Yeah. Seems like a waste. Whatever. It's Let okay. The, the kids will have fun. That's uh, July. I love Splatoon, and I thought about getting three for a while, but uh, they always end up disappointing me. They're fun for at least 15 hours, and then you get real bored of the combat. I've never really played them. I tried playing the demo, and I didn't care for the control scheme. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Detective Pikachu returns. I forgot there was a first one, what because the was- movie is based off of that what's the first one on was that a i Wii believe U? it's a 3ds 3ds mm-hmm. it's uh, still weird seeing pikachu talk it it somehow worked in the movie after a while but well ryan reynolds you know but ryan reynolds has charisma yeah this trailer for I detective love, pikachu i thought he sounded cool i thought he sounded like kind of boring he was surly i like him he just likes coffee they're like and you better believe he still likes coffee like everything we know about Detective Pikachu, everyone is, it confused my wife. Like we were watching it and she's just like, oh, Tim Goodman. Now he's a, now he's a white guy. And I had to go, no, they made him a black guy in the movie. Cause there's a, <laughs> cause if you, if you see it says returns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had to be like, no, they just, that's why originally there was a huge campaign to make Danny DeVito, the voice of Pikachu in the movie. I would love that. Oh, I think it would have been better than Ryan Reynolds. I thought he was fine. He was fine. I knew the twist, though, before, like, as oh, soon as yeah. they showed the dad from behind, it was a white dude. I'm like, Pikachu's his father. It's a good movie. I love Detective Pikachu. Uh, <laughs> we have the Super Mario RPG remake. Did not see this coming. I did not either. It looks really good. Um, I like the- Visually stunning, like a toy box. And it looks faithful. Yes. It looks like the same scale, the, the same, same movement. It's the same camera. Literally yes. just the same camera. And they showed a lot of the weird characters that you remember. Like they have that Donkey Kong like in like the cranial like cage thing. And I'm like, cool. That's they're they're keeping yeah. it weird, which I like. Yeah. And 
the orchestrated versions of some of those songs sounded so, so good. Yoko Shimomura is returning. Yep. For, uh, did the original soundtrack as well as a lot of the other Mario RPGs and Kingdom Hearts games. Oh, yeah. It's fucking awesome. Uh, I'm excited for that. That's kind of a day one purchase for me because I think my wife will like it too. Then we have the Untitled Peach game, which they showed so little of, I was left scratching my head. She kind of wanders around on a 2D plane, but with like 3D elements. On a stage. On a stage. And she does stuff with little magic light things. And um, she stands on a spot. And they said, what's happening when Peach stands in that spot? More details later. And then the two old guys, <laughs> like, um, it looks like she did a costume change. And I hope that her power in this game isn't changing costumes because that would be very much just like not getting away from the bad um, treatment of women they did before where her power was her emotions. emotions. Yeah, I remember that. Peach got angry. I owned that game for a while. I've heard the game's really good. It's fine. But if Peach's power is like, now she's wearing a black dress and she's, she's angry. got, she's angry now. Yeah. Um, they don't say anything about when it's coming out. This, this seems like a weird announcement and why it feels so like an incomplete, uncalculated thing they did. But I think with the Mario brothers movie, Peach is hot right now. Yeah. She's hot in the movie. Shit. Uh, I'm, I'd be excited to play a game like this. I, I, Anything that's kind of new and different, it's Nintendo for Christ's sake. Like that's even true. I'm having more fun with Bayonetta Origins after I really sat down with it. Yeah. I actually think it's awesome. But it's like it took me a second because it has this weird, like cutesy, like storybook kind of method of storytelling that I found annoying. Yeah. But once I got into it, I was like, Yeah, all right. Fuck yeah. It. It's what I'll play at my wife's place, you know? But I think you you hit the nail on the head that the movie is out and I'm sure this was in development, but they're like, we need to show something about Peach, get people excited. And I mean, it's just throwing more wood under the fire. That switch is burning. Like the switch is here to stay. Look at everything that we, we have things we can't even explain more about because they're so far away still. This, uh, and you know what? The install base is so big still. I don't think they have to worry about people ditching off because I know people who like Tyler who just bought a switch. And it's like, that is ancient to me. Like, just to hear people say that, I'm like, why didn't you buy into this earlier? It's an old system. It's a very old system. It's amazing. It lasted as long as the PlayStation 4. Uh, Mario, Peach, and then Luigi's Dark, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. I like that. Enhanced version of the 3DS title. Like they say, like it's a graphically enhanced version or something. Probably just because it's no longer... In 3D for the 3DS, so they had to yeah. adapt a few things. That's absolutely right. Uh, I think even from a little bit of what I saw, for a lot of people, Dark Moon is still their favorite. And I played it on the 3DS for a while. I don't know why I stopped, but I stopped. There's like four mansions in this one. Okay. And so it's like Castlevania 2. A little, I, maybe, I guess. I want that crossover. I love Luigi's Mansion 3. That is such a banger game. I've never played a single minute of Luigi's Mansion, and it breaks my heart. I could lend you three. You don't need to see them in order. But how did Luigi get his vacuum cleaner? I mean... <laughs> he got it from Professor E. Gad. Where did Leia get her belt for her gun? I have to watch the Obi-Wan show. <sighs> yeah, it's true. Here's Whatever your, happened to that little robot? Here's your belt. This will give you somewhere to put your gun in 10 years, Leia. I'm... I'm very much care about you you'll forget about me what happened to the little disc robot did she just say fuck this guy she got the new one and threw it away okay yeah that makes sense chicks right <laughs> oh man they probably just changed their outfits to get powers <laughs> uh we've got the batman arkham trilogy okay i actually got excited watching this trailer just really? be why just because i'm like i do like the batman games all three of them have their moments that are fun and good there are so many better ways to play this. I know. Oh, I'm with you. But just to like see them again, and I do like the DLC and everything all in one package. I already have it all, but it's just a trilogy I like to think about occasionally. I'm not going to buy this by any means, but... Yeah, I, I won't be playing it. I'm excited for people who might want to. Uh, there are a lot of people who switch as their only system, and uh, maybe this gives them the opportunity to play these games. I think they obviously had to do some research before they decided they were going to port these. And I think that might actually be the reason. 
My nephew, Orion, he's a gamer at this point. Yesterday, I texted him, like, what you been playing? He's like, I play a lot of cool games, but it's my bedtime. I'm like, all right, night, man. It was super funny. Uh, but, like, I could see if this game gets cheap enough, I'd buy it for him. Just he Because he plays yeah. on the Switch, and that's the only thing he likes to play on, really, mm-hmm. or his computer. But um, the Switch is ubiquitous, and it's just got a lot of reach. And I think it's not necessarily for other for some people to play again, but it's nice maybe for them to, like... Yeah. It's another opportunity for people to play things they missed. I won't touch it. It's fine. I like that it exists. I'll say that. I yeah. The more ge- the more that games are available is a good thing. But I won't buy it again. I I think yeah. I think that's the theme that we're eventually arriving on as a as a podcast as a whole. It's like, what's the point in keeping certain things off and keeping certain things on unless you're obviously Nintendo? Because I'll tell you this much: if you could play a new Super Mario Brothers game. On an Xbox, on an Xbox controller, you'd probably end up doing it on that. I have feelings about Nintendo controllers I want to talk about. Not right now. Maybe we'll do a Doggies After Dark. I have some feelings. Sure. Yeah. What else? There's a ton of other little things that got announced. I thought Gloomhaven looked awful. Um, I thought it looked trashy. I bet the board game is a lot of fun. I've heard good things about the board game. That's where I know the name from. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Just Dance 2024. All right, another one of those. Uh, <laughs> uh, Silent Hope. Uh, seven Silent Warriors fight in changing dungeons. I didn't think this looked great. Uh, I think it looked a little bland. In the first half, I was like, maybe? I was like, ooh, look at these anime cutscenes. I was kind of like, oh, what? And then I was very much like, a, no. It, they're, then they're small and chibi-fied. They're running through the dungeons. And it just seems like another one of those. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sorry, I'm playing Diablo 4. Maybe arguably one of the better versions of that. I don't need another one. I don't need one. There was a lot of them that I just like my eyes gloss over. I'm like, oh, okay. I'd rather play the top of the top than the slop of the slop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Fay Farm again. <laughs> yeah. Back again. Uh, I was annoyed by everything I saw in that. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. I hear those are fun. I played some of the, f- one of them that I got. It was either games with gold or like game pass but i hear it's cool they're fun and yeah. if you're a hot wheels kid or a kid who likes cars great i like the track building shit i care way more about this than forza motorsport <sighs> well i like for I, well forza horizon is the good one okay that's the arcadey version I prefer, motorsport i prefer is, the arcadey version but you know what's great is running around on hot wheel tracks in like a big bedroom well map. they have expansions that let you do that oh, cool. with their physics system which actually works really well it's fun uh manic mechanics i don't even know if i saw that someone uh, the trailer doesn't make it seem like it but i read some people talking about it they're like think overcooked but like with a car garage and i was like maybe whatever but mario and rabbits dlc um the last spark hunter uh it's the second one didn't even know the first one i recently beat um sparks of hope uh, I like it. I also think it wears itself super thin. Yeah. Yep. You're gonna actually you're actually gonna get annoyed at the side shit you can do. Okay. Uh, the first one's perfect. First one rules. Uh, Dragon Quest Monsters: The Dark Prince. It now back in the day, in America, it used to be called Dragon Warrior, right? Mm-hmm. And I have my copy of Dragon Warrior Monsters too, still on the Game Boy. Okay. I love that game. Yeah. This doesn't give me any hope. Because I think it kind of looks, it looks just kind of bad. It looks like every other Dragon Quest game to me. I thought it looked okay. I thought it looked fine. But I also, I have such weird expectations about shit like that. Then we go on to. Yeah, that's coming out December 1st. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you combine monsters, uh, kind of a classic RPG. Yeah. Dragon Quest is one of the only. People that can get away with just classic turn-based RPG that I'm like, for some reason that style still works to me. <laughs> I think, um, I think, uh, I think that this is going to actually be pretty popular because my first roommate in college actually, uh, the one thing we bonded over was Dragon Warrior Monsters. Yeah, and I'm like, I've never met a single other person who's played this, and I was just like, let's talk about it. Did we just become best friends? We battled each other. It was fun. Yeah. We, had, we brought out our Game Boys. It was great. Uh, then Pikmin 4. 
Whoo, doggy. Yeah. You put, I cannot wait for this well, game. Dude, you said it, man. Doggy, that's one of the new mechanics. Ochi. His the, name is Ochi. I like the name. Ochi is Ochi super cute. O-A-T. Yeah, Ochi. Yep. And uh, it looks like this game doesn't have like an actual, because in the other games, there's like a ticking clock that you have to fight against. And this one, it seems more like they're into the idea of exploring and really seeing what you're looking at and developing your resources and upgrading and doing all this cool shit they haven't had in the other ones. They also chose a different camera angle. Hmm. Usually it's kind of an uh, isometric top down, yep. like a bird's eye view. Now they've kind of chosen to ditch that and kind of make it more of an over the shoulder mm-hmm. kind of, it's not over the shoulder, it's pushed back. I don't even know how to describe that camera angle. It follows the character rather than be, be like, yeah. is like separated from your movement in a big way. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest problem with Pikmin is they haven't found one that really resonates with the masses yet, but it's like a big seller. And this, this one, be it. this looks the closest so far. Yeah. Uh, I liked the way that they explained the trailer. I liked that they, do you need to cross water? Ochi can do that too. I'm like, great. I love this. I love this dog. I mean, and the, all the little Pikmin are hanging on top of Ochi. My problem, if anything, is the Pikmin. I just don't really, I don't know them enough to care about them. They just kind of like, a, they're just, um, they're just fun little plant guys. Brad. Yeah, I need to try I, it. I, you have the opportunity because Pikmin one and two are HD now, and they released it that fucking day. But. They must be pretty cheap because these are old games, right? No. <laughs> uh, I no. paid $50 in total for the both of them. Yeah. You paid. Okay. I had to. You'd get, you'd get a PS5 sooner if you weren't rebuying old games you've already played. Listen, I had to. <laughs> this And I could have waited for the physical release in September. Oh, they are doing a physical release for sure. In September, though. By that point, I'll have Pikmin 4 and I won't want to play Pikmin no more. Maybe I'll wait till September to actually buy them. It, honestly, it's. Uh, I started playing Pikmin One, like a, and Jordan's like, you just know exactly what to do, and I'm like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, yep. You just go over here, you do this thing. Pikmin One is a very short game. Uh, notoriously, uh, it's a release title for the GameCube. Yeah. Uh, it is also kind of a mini masterpiece. It works in a lot of ways uh, that games haven't since. I like it when t- Nintendo, even though this Pikmin has never been a big selling franchise, yeah. they just know and trust in what kind of a game it is, and they believe in it. And it's the opposite of that Mean Girls meme, where it's like, stop trying to make Pikmin happen, because they're like, no, eventually it's going to happen, and you guys are well, putting in the work for it. Well, that Pikmin mobile game, apparently still quite popular. Pikmin Bloom is what it's called. Okay. It's kind of like a Neantic Pokemon Go thing, but it's Pikmin. Okay. I've never touched it. I don't want to get addicted to a, a mobile game. I don't. I just don't like having my phone used for anything else other than what I use it for. It's already too much of my life. Porn. Naturally. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Something with like a hard carapace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I'm, I honestly, like it was... Pikmin is important to me because it's just such a different game than you've ever played before in your life. It is interesting. It's still kind of pretty. Some of the textures have not aged well, and you can't really up them properly without fully redoing it. But it's in HD now. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. That's the most important thing. You just control your little guys. Uh, the biggest problem with Pikmin 1 is that it's relatively boring. Now, okay. Because I've had so many other different types of Pikmin. Yeah. Like in the second one, they really expand it to a point where it's really hard to go back to that first one. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to go back into Breath of the Wild after Tears of the Kingdom at some point just to see yeah. how my thoughts about it have changed. Sure. Uh, hindsight's different after you play the new thing. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. That's right. We don't make new games. We remaster, repackage. Uh, this, though, does look like a good collection. I it's do, a good collection. Metal Gear Solid's 1, 2, and 3, uh, as well as Metal Gear 1 and 2, both versions, the Famicom and the NES releases of both of those games. This is good game preservation. That's one thing that uh, I think it will turn out well. Hopefully it does. Uh, as long as they're good packages where the games play well, mm-hmm. great. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, truly, sign, me up, sign me up for collections of uh, games I love. I will buy them. This is okay. Like, I I have the one that they released for the PlayStation 3, uh, like the, the whole saga before 5 came out. Yeah. And I played through every single one, all the way through. Uh, loved it. Loved every second of it. I've already done it. I don't need this. Like, Maybe I will, because I haven't played through 3 ever. But they're doing Three, the remake. But yeah. also, I think I'd rather play the original. We'll see how it comes out. Um, play the original. Yeah. Who knows? But it's it's a nice collection. Switch gets collections. Put everything on the Switch. That includes Vampire Survivors, which is finally coming out on the Switch. And normally, I would maybe be like, okay, whatever. But the moment they revealed Couch Co-op, yeah, I was down to clown. Yeah, that's new. You and Jordan can sit on the couch together and have a great time with that. Well, it used to be uh, even Matt. Matt loves Vampire Survivor. It's little cocaine crack bundles. It's fun. It's it's it hits. It scratches the the casino itch that everybody has. But then it, we would just be taking turns. Yeah, like literally, we'd just sit there, have a few beers, take turns. Like, okay, once you're dead, I'll take over. And people yeah. get it. And you don't have to be a big gamer. No, I could give the controller to Carly and. She would be able to play it without me explaining barely anything because it is. Well, it is. It is literally a select button when you need to. Otherwise, and then it's just moving the analog stick. That's yeah. it. Which I I would I recommend Vampire Survivors to people. I think it's a bit if you're get addicted to things maybe not, but uh, yeah. I don't know. Headbangers Rhythm Royale <laughs> is a really fun pigeon game where you play mini games that have to do with rhythm. Okay, you say really fun. Did you mean it? Were you being cheeky? I think the I think the character designs are really funny. Okay, I thought kind of minion esque, I guess, but I think they actually look really cute because I like pigeons. And I they say it's twenty musical based mini games, and I that sounds fine. Yeah, that's fine. Like especially if you can compete with your friends. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Uh, we have Penny's Big Breakaway. This is what we were talking about earlier. The guy Christian Whitehead. You know and. To me, my thought was I didn't care about the way this game looked, and then I found that it was from the Sonic Mania guy, and I and you were interested. I cared more, but also just because you made a really good 2D game doesn't mean it'll work with a 3D game. But I think this looks kind of solid. I I don't know if I love the world design, but I love the movement. Oh, I don't like the character designs at all. I love the movement and the way that the world was looking, like yeah. way it, you interacted with it. Yeah. Uh, I will probably give that a shot depending on the price point. Uh, Mario Kart 8 booster course uh, pass wave five. <laughs> uh, I have not tried most of the other waves and I really should get on that because apparently there are some really fun tracks there that I'd, I only ever touched wave one. Yeah, there's good ones. They're all good. Um, you've, you've played some of them. I have the Nintendo pass now, so I've played Same. through all the maps. Right. Uh, I'm excited about the new characters. Petey Piranha was one of my boys from Double he was, Dash. He kept that cart on the track. I loved him. The pipe, the pipe, pipe car. the pipe car is one of the best ones in the game. I love Petey Piranha. Just like this big dude, he has like the little wavy arms. I love from that guy. Super Mario Sunshine, where yeah. you, where he, where he gets so chubby on water, and you have to pound it out of him through his uh, ex. Uh, that's his me with belly Highlight. button. That's me with High Life on the weekends, just dancing and people shooting High Life in my mouth. It's, it's horrifying. <laughs> Uh, though what PD's PD was announced and I was immediately excited. I was, yeah, yeah, I love him. And then they announced Wiggler, and I was immediately like, whatever. I don't care about you. But then Comic, yeah, Comic's cool. Comic is gonna be, I think, everyone's new favorite character. I think so. Yeah. Comic rules yeah. in all the games. He basically is the villain of uh, Yoshi's Island. He's yeah, and he's also like makes a good appearance in the movie. Uh, yeah, yep. I like him he's as funny. as like a a sub villain. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Uh, that seems awesome. I like one of the new tracks, uh, <laughs> "Squeaky Clean Sprint," laundry level. It's just it's a laundry room, and That's I saw cool. that there was like a little soap thing with like a mushroom on it. I was like, I'm guaranteed. Like Tom's house. I guarantee it'll be cute. That never opened though. Yeah, uh, Star Ocean: The Second Story R uh, is coming out. This game looks beautiful. Very beautiful. Uh, I don't know if I have the energy or the want to play a game like this. Um, My brother still has it on the PlayStation. I, it's from what I remember. I never played it. It is one of the most complicated RPG systems. Like 
Really? All of the crafting, everything that goes into the menus and everything, the most complicated and convoluted from what I remember. Uh, we, and I wish I, if I were young and I had played it, I think this probably would have had more of an effect on me. Yeah. I love the, the new design, though, like you're saying. It's the 2D characters moving in a 3D world a la... Uh, it kind of reminds me of what like the new Ayudan Chronicles got going on, yeah. And the character portraits, the little like uh, animations of when the characters are talking, look really good. Yeah, I've played Star Ocean games. I played four. Yeah, and I have till the end of time or whatever the PS2 one was. Yeah, and it that's didn't, three, I it, believe. It felt, yeah, it didn't work for me. Yeah, but Star Ocean Two, I think, was like the sweet spot. So that's cool. Uh, my uh, my brother Judge Tempest said. Finally watched the trailer. Looks good. The narrator, I hate the voice. That's just all those trailers, though. I can. It's fucking Nintendo, man. Yeah. Uh, can barely remember the game. Remembers the character's name. Claude C. Kenny. Claude C. Kenny. Another Claude. Final Fantasy 16 has a Claude. Oh yeah. Well, interesting. Yeah. Great. Uh, excited for the new voice actors and to go through the story. Probably more excited for RPG though. Yeah, that's November second. So yes. Mm. A lot of options this if this fall. is If this is $60, I would scream. Uh, <laughs> a good $40 game, maybe. Maybe maybe 40 but it should be packaged with one if, if they're even going to do that. Yeah. Uh, WarioWare Move It. Uh, I'm going to have to play it because I love WarioWare for the most part. I didn't like that side-scroller one, uh, but that's fine. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom Amiibos. Well, wait, Zelda wait. looks great. WarioWare Move It. It's all Joy-Con mini games, which has me worried. Why? I don't know. I don't do a lot of like little Joy-Con. They work great. The Joy-Con waggles good. I haven't done a lot of games that involve that. No, they work great. Okay. Yeah, they they work fine, especially like the system uh, that they have going. The problem is, is that my Joy Cons keep failing, and not just the analog stick, all the buttons. Wow. So, uh, well, not all of them. The L, the L button. Yeah. Was basically being non-functional to me. When I was playing Tears of the Kingdom, you know, the thing that you use to bring up all your abilities. Yeah. Uh, turns I, out. I have been using a lot of different Switch controllers recently. Um, November 3rd for WarioWare Move It. That's fine. Tears of the Kingdom had some Amiibos announced. Fine. I think the Zelda one looks beautiful. I would probably get the Zelda one. There were some people complaining, like, when you were hoping for a Tears of the Kingdom DLC announcement. They're like, the game just fucking came out. The game just fucking came out. Give, Give them it a second. I guarantee it's coming. But it's coming. Yeah. Man. And then, the kind of coup de grace, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I love it. I am super excited for this game. I love the name. Yeah. I love that it's not new Super Mario Brothers, which was the worst name. Stop calling it that. At a certain point, it wasn't even new anymore. And those games are good. I just, I hated everything about that name. Uh, Mario Brothers Wonder, it's a new 2D Mario. Mm -hmm. um, I watched... Grand Pooh Bear, who is like a Mario fiend. Mario fiend. He knows everything, and he was watching it, and it was good hearing their uh, their critique because they're like, "Oh, it's fast," and that's something oh. that I didn't pick up. But they're like, uh, "He's like, it moves um, very quickly. The jumps are quick and springy. Uh, there's P speed. Whether or not it says P yeah. speed, there's like he called out a lot of things that were interesting. But uh, and then I also just saw it's like." Mario just, it's dropping acid. It's drugs. It's like Mario takes drugs. It's fucking, he becomes a fucking elephant. He becomes an elephant and just, uh, the, the flowers talk to you. Hey, uh. <laughs> this game, it's after Mario Maker 2, you couldn't even, we even talked about it, I think. We said, can you even imagine what comes after this? Because the problem ends up being either you're going to be more of the same. How do you shift it? How do you make it more fun? How do you make it more interesting? And I think this really did the trick. I don't think, because when I saw it, when I when it first started out, I was like, oh my God, another new Super Mario Brothers. Another one. And they're just going to call it the Switch or something. His, for, the the, the uh, animation style looks great, though. It's, it's a little new. more. It's, it's a little more like of that stilted kind of animation. Yeah. It's almost I, like a stop motion claymation-y. Yeah. Claymation it, it isn't, but it's got a feel. Mario looks different, too squat pudginess well it's not the squat pudginess but like even his design has been carefully changed in like several ways like his thickness he looks more like the movie 
I'm I'm glad that they also aren't standardizing though. Like Mario yeah. and like Mario RPG, he looks very different than this one. It's not like they're trying to have a unified. Design. Yeah, they're trying to get close to the Super Nintendo version, which they accurately got the look. I think this trailer looks very very fun. Yeah, uh, four player co op, mm-hmm. which isn't never going to sell me on a platformer, but mm-hmm. it's something fine. It's different for like, I would play with one other person, but any number higher than that, I get annoyed. 3D Mario World that works in yeah. a different way. I don't like it in 2D games. It just becomes too crowded and busy. Yeah. And also, if they fuck up one of your jumps. Yeah. Also, if I'm playing with someone, all I'm going to be doing is fucking up their jumps. I'm going to be jumping on them. Yeah. Yep. Because it's just mm-hmm. funny to me. Yeah. Uh, the plants talk to you in mm-hmm. weird ways every time you run by them. Like, which... hey, man, how's it going? <laughs> it's like, whoa, it's working. Yeah. Guys, I, it's kicked in. Are you feeling it? Daisy's a playable character. Sure. That's interesting. Sure. Let I don't her, know. Let her have her moment. That's fine. Yeah. I, I yep. I, I'm, I, this is a day one for me. Um, I'm always looking for games like this. If this turns out to be kind of to what Tropical Freeze was for Donkey Kong Returns. Yeah. If this can kind of like re-solidify just how good a platformer can be in this style, I'm in. It's if anything, it might get too weird. Like when he grabs like the the acid mushroom or whatever it is, and like everything goes bonkers on screen. As long as I'd it's like that. I like it, as long as it's still like fun to do. And it's, it's not just busy for busy sake. There's not just like extra things for extra things' sake. As long as it's still like the levels are thought out which they will be because it's mario yeah i mean i i'm just trying to it's a high ticket item if i could that's the only like potential downfall i could consider and i know i'm just playing devil's advocate because it's going to be great yeah wario's advocate or bowser's advocate as they say i was a little upset there's not a new wario land game and then they're giving us another wario where because wario land it's having a renaissance now style wise yeah. like pizza tower. There's like several other ones too that are gaining some notoriety. So I don't know. They need like, to make a new Mario game in the style of Mario brothers Two American, uh, where the characters play differently, but the levels are all kind of built around it. Kind of like shovel Knight, where they similar levels, but everyone goes through them differently. Imagine yeah. if you had Wario do the Wario movement, Peach do all of her floaty shit. Like they all had very different play styles. That'd be interesting. It yeah. could be interesting, but I'm just trying to think of a way to get you Wario in a game. Oh, man, I just really need Wario in a game that I can play as Wario. We need a new Wario. You world. cowards! You were releasing no good games this year. Mario <laughs> Brothers Wonder. I hated this entire thing. It was not even good. Uh so there. And that wasn't even everything that was announced this month. Jesus Christ. E3, eat your heart out, man. You're never coming back. You're dead. We don't need you. We don't need you anymore. We don't even think about you anymore. I deleted your number. I I keep it just for, you know, you get hookups. <laughs> hey, what's up? You got any games? Yeah, we got an Ouya in the parking lot. And you're like, all right, I'm gonna swing, Ooh, I'll swing by. I love by. playing mobile games on my television. I'll come by. Okay. <laughs> don't you want to get dirty? Yeah. I don't know what I'm most excited for out of all of these but there is just so much fun and good things coming for this year i'm overwhelmed actually i usually also don't join hype trains uh pikmin 4 has me extremely excited i am literally just going to spend the entire day doing pikmin 4 Mm. um which is great uh starfield amazing that's a day one purchase for me. Starfield. I'm- like, because that's how you can tell that I'm interested in a game is if I'll get it day one. I might get Starfield day one. That's probably what I'm most excited for out of all of the announcements I, I mean, saw. you can get it day one. I will have a day one. Uh, Mario Brothers Wonder is up there. It's going to be a day one for Mario me. RPG, not. I just played Mario RPG in the Super Nintendo Classic like a year ago. Yeah. So I don't need to again for a bit. Yeah. I, it, it's going to be fantastic for sure, but. But otherwise, um, I wonder if there's anything in here that's like an Spider-Man obvious. Two, Spider-Man Two for you, like yeah. a dragon, infinite wealth, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth, but that's not until next year. Yeah, so it doesn't even count. Yeah, uh, I would say, hmm. and like a dragon, infinite wealth is 2024 as well. Uh, Starfield, 
Maybe were, maybe yeah, Starfield better. Um, yeah. Assassin's Creed Mobile. <laughs> the VR. Oh, uh, you forgot Return to Moria. No, we mentioned that. No, oh, for you. <laughs> for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sonic Superstars, maybe. Uh, uh, this is just a glut of new games. We've already been spoiled this year, and I've spent too much money, and this might end up being one of those years in gaming. It's I call it the post-pandemic nut. Yep. Everyone had to hold off for a bit. Yep. And this is going to go down as, I think, one of the best years in gaming. And on that note, Hair the Dogcast exists because of people like you, so thanks for listening. If you have any questions or thoughts about this episode or anything at all, reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook. We're Hair the Dogcast, and we are on Twitter at Hot Dogcast. Email us at HairTheDogcast at gmail.com for access to bonus episodes, episodes way in advance, uh, Elden Dogs on a bi-weekly basis starting now, and even an ex- um, uh, like 10 bonus episodes with movie and TV discussion, as well as a lot more down the line. Check us out on patreon.com slash hair the dogcast. We even have free trials available if you want to just give it a try. We encourage it. If you want, we have a great community. Join our Discord. We'd love to have you. We all like talking. Uh, executive producers Ryan Christy Nick, Kip Kip Kipper, Brian Ward, Jordan Hoff, and Phil Wright. We appreciate your support. And we are a proud member of the Tokyo Beat Podcast Network. Make sure to check out all of the other amazing shows. Uh, do you want to do a one for the road? Um, yeah. Uh, Go out and make yourself a really nice meat sauce. Actually, you know what? You put it in a slow cooker, right? Okay. Uh, just get the tomato sauce, get everything you need, but then really give it some time and test it out every 30 minutes and decide if it needs something else. And then you'll have yourself a goddamn awesome meal. Throw some peppers in there. Uh, okay. Be sure, be sure to add a little, like some sugar to that, maybe a little bit of honey. It's going to round it out and make sure to add time and love and love. But I also meant the herb time. So oh, um, my one for the road is find a friend who knows how to make a good meat sauce with everything Dylan just said, because he gave me some. <laughs> and <laughs> Someone's got to eat it. I'm excited to have that. Yeah. This has been Hair the Dogcast. Thanks for tuning in. And good night.